It is Friday, August 25th. Happy Freaky Friday, Menace Army. It is time. I really, I didn't, I put a lot of time into this. A lot of thought into it. Really tried to remember anything and everything I can remember. A couple things I'm going to have to uh, divulge after we, we get to the Swamp King segment today. A little bit longer coaches report, but after watching that documentary, I had to talk about it. I had to tell some stories and had to kind of tell Netflix how they should have done their job because what an opportunity to give, you know, shed light into such a polarizing time program, personalities, celebrities, and they dropped the ball on the Urban Meyer fluff piece. So we're going to pick up the ball and hit that Steph Curry swish. That's what we're going to do. Ooh, that's a bar. We're going to do it for you. It's coming at about the 20 minute mark. We'll drop it for you, but we got a show to do on top of that. Chris, how's your week been, man? Real good. Real good, bro. Just kind of kicking it, hanging in there. Really excited for college football. We get college football tomorrow. College football tomorrow. We got Notre Dame Navy at like 2 or 2.30, and then USC, whoever, San Jose State or yeah. some shitty team. USC versus me. But either way, we get to watch college football. Like the video. If you like the fact that college football is coming tomorrow, and if you watch the Swamp Kings part only, like make sure you like that part. Yeah, we like, made it, bro. Can you believe it? We made it through the offseason. Made it through the offseason. It is officially game week. Yeah. Starting Sunday for every other team in the country other than these week zero teams. But I'm excited for it, man. I'm really excited for the weekend. We got football Friday night tonight. Liberty's got Glenville. Old Tangy Liberty got Glenville coming down. Ted Ginn Sr., the GOAT, bringing his boys down to probably put a whooping on my Old Tangy boys. But that's okay. Neither here nor there. Chris and I are talking about pulling up. Justine and I might go. We might see you there. If you're pulling up, let me know. Yeah, who all's going? And what other good high school uh, games are on TV or in, in the area? I think oh. Belfound's playing around here, too. Oh, I today. can tell you right now. I, I got a whole chart, Chris. You do? As soon as it pulls up. Well, we'll you got call, uh, Hit Lukey, then let's talk about it. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, all right. come on. Like, I miss I miss bro. All right, Lukey, let him know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. All right, high school sport. What what high school games are on this? Uh, There's this some Friday? massive games. Massive. So Glenville's playing Liberty. The two the two schools that I follow, right? My alma mater, and then where my son's going to go to high school. Dublin Kaufman's playing Centerville. Shout out to Elks. Okay. That'll be a massive game. St. Ignatius is playing at Mentor. Princeton's playing at Lakota West. There's some ranked matchups in the state of Ohio today. Those are the four biggest games in Division One that I have charted. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a hell of, a hell of a weekend. Yeah, I, I, I want to see Bell Fountain plays, too, because I am oddly interested in kind of what they've got going on. Bell Fountain, that's, that's little, little little league football, Chris. Yeah, that is little league football. Their <laughs> website is crazy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's just like all red with a little black screen on it. <laughs> they've got North Union High School. Exactly. Not worth discussing. Yeah, I guess not. Well, it's just Tavian St. Clair. I know, but he it's, 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 oh, it's shitty football. It's versus Coldwater. Oh, cold water is not not terrible. Okay, you've heard of cold water. Good. I, I've I've heard of cold water. Yes. <laughs> good. Good old good old cold water. Zach, how you doing, bro? You have a good week. I didn't ask you about your week. It was a great week. Mm -hmm. Great week. I mean, I really ramped up the the time and energy put into this platform. I think we put out after this show. I think we put out five five great shows this week, and it will probably be the biggest week we've ever had when it comes to numbers and. And things like that. So really excited about it. Had a great week. Ready to have an even better one next week. Facts. Today is a Super Chat Friday as well. So we're going to we're gonna be here as long as Super Chats keep coming in and as long as the questions keep rolling in as well. I want to start off with this. It looks like this is going to happen at some point here pretty soon. Amazon has ramped up its talks with Disney about ESPN streaming partnership. Um, ESPN is considering charging between $20 and $35 a month for the new streaming service, which would make it the most expensive streaming service in the u.s at least for a sports platform all these streaming platforms all these subscriptions it feels like this is going to happen at some point so amazon can get more of their interactive experience as a part of kind of the shopping world and sports well i mean i listen i'm here for it because guess what chris if they launch this and espn becomes a subscription model as much as i hate espn i, I, I like watching sports mm -hmm. 35 bucks a month i'm paying it and i'm canceling youtube tv fuck that 80 dollars a month i don't watch anything I don't watch other anything on TV sports, right? other than sports. I have Netflix and uh, like Amazon Prime and HBO Max. Like that's what Justine and I watch. If we don't watch sports, we're watching some series that's already on a subscription model. So I'm here for it. Save me half. It'd be half price for me. Yeah. As much as I don't want to give ESPN my money, 
I'll do it because I want to watch sports. Exactly. But it's like, it, it just, it'll, it'll tack on because you'd have to get that one. And then you'd have to get like, what, the CBS one, which is, I think, Paramount Plus. You'd have to get all of them to watch like all the Big Ten and all the SEC. And then if you want, you could pay 100 bucks for the, uh, for the Pack Four as well. <laughs> the Pack Four. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody subscribing to that shit. If that deal even ends up still becoming a thing. Um, NFL, real quick. Bro, the Cardinals are not even trying to hide. No. They are getting rid of everybody. Tank they, for Caleb. They gave away Isaiah. No, it's not just tank for Caleb. They want to tank for both of them. Because they're doing deals with the uh, with the Texans, too, trading them bad players also. Because they, I think, and they, they get a second pick. Yeah, they they, they, they get Houston's first-round pick, yeah. whatever that is. And so as bad as Houston is, that's a better pick for them. So they're trying to go. They're trying to go 0 and 0 and 17. They traded away another offensive lineman for a what seventh round draft pick or something like that. Just fire sale, Zach. Fire sale for Caleb. That's fire what they're that's what they're Caleb. doing. Because the reality is they can't control Houston. Houston's going to be bad, right? And, and if CJ Stroud struggles at all, they'll probably be the second worst team. It'll be between them and the Cardinals, and there's a couple other candidates. But they're going to have two top five picks without a doubt. It's going to be really bad. You think Marv, Marvin Caleb? I mean, if they can get him, yeah. If they get one and two, obviously they can get whoever the fuck they want. But yeah. if, you know, if, if if Houston ends up getting the third or fourth pick, Marv might not be there. Right. Well, you think Marv will go top two potentially? I mean, I don't know. It just it depends on who's slotted where and what their team needs are. I think Marv is going to be regarded as as a top five pick, yeah. and it's just going to come down to team needs and what they want to do with that that high draft capital. And the Cardinals have a chance to get even more capital once they figure out a way to move Kyler Murray. If they're able to move Kyler Murray, in fact, they might have to give away draft picks to move Kyler Murray to be honest, because they signed that huge, huge deal. Um, you know what they need to do, Zach? They need to go ahead and trade for Trey Lance. <laughs> Make Trey Lance a quarterback? Yep. <laughs> I couldn't even be the backup at San Fran. Come be our quarterback. I promise we're not tanking, though. That is the only way they can do it. They need to go trade a backup linebacker for Trey Lance. I'm with it. I'm here for it. And I would love it. I'd be, I'd be, very, I'd be very down for that part of it. Um, second thing, pretty unfortunate news. Judy, Jerry Judy, got cut off the field during joint practice with the Rams. Reports were that he was tearing it up, and he was going to be the one to revive Russell Wilson's career. I'm sick about this one, and this is why you do your fantasy drafts late. I immediately texted my my. Our, we have a little uh, family fantasy league. I uh, really, it's my friends and I have a fantasy mm -hmm. league. It's a money league. It's a big deal, and I, they always every year they did it this year too. Like, bro, when is the draft? When are we going to draft? Because they know people that are having drafts. Their other league is drafting, and I always tell them. We will draft the weekend before the season starts because they don't play games that weekend. So ain't nobody getting hurt. Mm -hmm. And how many people drafted Jerry Judy yesterday? Like, yeah, it's, it's terrible. I mean, I, let's hope it's not anything crazy serious because I, I I'm with you. I think Jerry Judy was going to have a breakout year. If, if Russell Wilson could fucking throw it remotely close to him, just put it in the but area. You hate, hate injuries, but this is why you wait for the draft. Mm -hmm. You know what the, you know what the funniest draft story was? When OJ Simpson drafted Andrew Luck, and then Andrew oh, Luck yeah. retired twenty minutes later, no <laughs> doubt. And then, and then he put out a video asking yeah. him, "What I ever do to you? <laughs> what did you do to him?" It's official, officially official. Remember, we said yesterday that DTR is going to be the backup quarterback. People were like, "No, Dobbs is still there." You know, DTR is a third string. Well, guess what? Dobbs has been traded to the Cardinals. Maybe to start. Maybe to start. That's what I'm saying. The Cardinals found their guy, Josh Dobbs. Yep. And Kellen Mond got cut, meaning. That DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson, is QB2. From QB2. fifth round draft to QB2. The real question is going to be, they, they need a third string quarterback. You can't they have do. two quarterbacks. So it's Josh Dobbs. Is he that good that you can get like capital out of him and not and so much capital that it doesn't benefit you from having him be QB3? I, I don't know. Um, I mean, but, they're going to go get somebody. Yeah, they have to. You have mm -hmm. to have a third you quarterback. You really need four. Yeah, most teams roll with three, and then like the emergency. Well, no, no you always have a fourth. He's on practice squad. Oh, you, yeah, you, you yeah. need four on on the roster. Yeah, this is weird. Only having two, very bizarre. Go call up Cody Kessler. I'm sure he's around. Call Cardale. Bring Cardale back to Cleveland. He'd be a third string guy. The personalities in that room would be awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that would that would be uh that'd be really awesome. Zach, want to hit some super chats and then keep this thing moving. Mister Jones, thanks for the twenty. Appreciate you. If you have a question. We're here. We're around for it. Um, Bam Buckeye, thanks for the two. Zach, love the show. Miss you in Columbus. Well, I'm still here. You might miss me at Ohio State, I think you mean, but yeah. I'm here at Bridge Park right now. What he really means is, like, they missed the um, 
when wide receiver screens are thrown, what happens out there? <laughs> the, the blocking. You, you missed the blocking. Yeah, he missed the blocking. The only wide receiver coach in the country that likes power and blocking. And, and, and maybe the Twitter antics, but I'm still on Twitter. Or maybe. X. Yeah, you, you still have some, some X antics. Austin, thanks for the five. Zach, you've known Ryan Day since 2005. Did you always know he was capable of becoming a head coach at a place like Ohio State? Great question. Um, you, you know, you don't you don't know that when someone's a GA that they're going to elevate to that level. But he was he was one of the best GAs I've ever been around. So you would assume that his career trajectory, as long as he kept growing as a coach and developing, that he would become a big time college football coach. I didn't know he was that level, like, like able to be one of the best head coaches in the country until he came back to Ohio state. And I got to work with him and I was like, Holy shit, this dude relates to players. He's extremely smart, great football coach, understands the game, can, can talk to any type of player and can get the best out of him. Gets buy-in players buy into Ryan day when he talks and he's extremely organized. That's I didn't know until he came back. Once I started working with him at Ohio state, absolutely. I knew right away. When he was at Florida, so I don't, I don't think people understand how close you two were when you guys were at Florida together. But when he was at Florida and then when he left, when the first time you saw him back, did you feel a huge level up in kind of his football knowledge? Um, well, you mean when he came to Ohio State? Because I, yeah. I saw him a, a number of times like oh, okay. in between. Oh, you, where did you see him at? I, I, he came and worked camp. I saw him on the road. Like, you know, we just coaches circle just, stuff. Yeah, just, just okay. random, random occurrences. Like he came and worked camp at Florida when he went to, I think, uh, U Temple. Maybe. Yeah, or we, Temple or UMass. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. Maybe both. But, um, yeah, I mean, you could just – and you could tell as he's going down his journey, like getting getting back with Chip Kelly in the NFL and, and just the moves he was making, getting back to Boston College as early as he did in his career, you knew that he was that well-respected in the coaching circles that he was going to elevate all, all the way to the top. I, I am curious kind of how much that two-year in the NFL stint did for him schematically-wise. Um, oh, yeah, it transformed his football knowledge. And he, he would tell me stories about it. I mean, just like the amount of time he got to spend on football when he was in the NFL because there's no recruiting, none of that bullshit. All you do is study football, teach football, like watch cut-ups, build your philosophy. And that's where he really elevated his offensive schematic mind, right? His football acumen on the offensive side of the ball was really from the, that two-year almost residency in football studying. When he came back and told you that, did you think maybe for a quick sec, maybe I need to leap to the NFL just for a year and then come back just to like kind of gain that knowledge? Because Jeff Halfley, same deal. Halfley, when he got to the NFL, like he talked about how he was just able to just, it was so eye opening. And when he came back, he felt so much better than everybody else. Did you ever think for your coach's development side of it, maybe about uh, a two year stint in the NFL? Yeah. I mean, I thought about it. I, it's just, I, I loved college football. Okay. I, I I could justify being away from my kids as much as I was because I was impacting other kids' lives, and I, it was like a, a combination. I could, I could raise my kids and impact other kids. In the NFL, you don't do that. You just fucking teach football, talk. I mean, it's really yeah. football nerds, right, is what it is. And there's not a lot of impacting lives in the NFL, so that, that wasn't really my passion. But as a means to an end, I would have considered it. What's that like? You tell your agent, hey, I'm trying to get to the NFL for just one year. And then they just go get you a job. You think you could have landed an NFL job pretty easily? Or yeah, I mean, you know, once like Brian Hartline right now could go get an NFL job. Once you right. have the resume, if yeah, your agent gets involved and, and, and you meet scouts and coaches and pro day, you have to start networking to try to make that move, which I never did mm -hmm. because I didn't really want to do it. But yeah, you, that's just how you do it. You network, you get your agent involved, you gotta have the resume, and then you make the jump. Got you. Do you think you had the resume at that point when Ryan yeah. got there? Probably close. close. I, I, probably after Terry McLaurin, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, yeah. then it would have been a no-brainer, a lot like Hartline now. Yeah, and then the Michael Thomas, Noah Browns, Curtis Samuels. I, yeah, I think I would have okay. in the next year or two if I didn't get fired. I'm just curious. I guess we, we never we never dug into that. I always I, I've always been kind of curious about would you have gone to the NFL just to improve before you get back? Because coaching is is a development process. Yeah. Nice other question, Austin. That was a really great one. Alex, thanks for the five. Is our D better suited for a 4-3 with CJ Steele and Tommy, especially against the run first teams? Well, then you're either putting Sonny back deep or you're taking him out. See, the thing they the thing they have with Sonny Styles right now is they have a linebacker and a DB in one body, right? That's what they love about him. But you, the only time you're doing that is 12 personnel. 11 mm -hmm. personnel, you I, I would never, in, in, unless you're calling Sonny a linebacker, I would never play three linebackers against three receivers. Because you're so limited, you have to play zone coverage. You're not going to play man man coverage yeah. with with a true linebacker like CJ Hicks covering a slot receiver like a Mechek Buka. That would be a nightmare. How'd you guys do it in 2014? Well, we didn't play a lot of man. We played a lot. It was all press quarters. And Darren Lee, when when it was man, he had a lot of help. 
And honestly, we went more nickel to 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 play man if we did. Yeah. But it, it was just a t- different defense. Like Jim Knowles plays a lot of man coverage, so you got to match personnel. Now against twelve personnel, when he usually leaves nickel in the game, Tanner Tanner McAllister was coming to the box. You got to like Sonny Styles in that role. But if you wanted to sub a third linebacker in, I think that would be, be fitting. Ray, thanks for the 10. You guys are killing it so far on the Super Chat Friday. I've never seen anything like our running back injury situation last year. Do you think it was the turf? From what I understand, the NFLPA is trying to get it banned because of the injury data they have. I know this much. I don't know if it was all because of the turf. It certainly wasn't all because of the turf. But the turf was a a player. Mm -hmm. And that being said, replace the fucking turf. Like, if it has any negative impact at all, even if it's minuscule, get it out. Get new turf. You You got the money. Right. And with all with all the shit going on in the NFL with the exact same turf, there's no way you can't get a free replacement. Facts. Like that has to be. I mean, that's just a business deal. Like, hey, you gave me a shitty product. Like this people are getting hurt. Like, you gotta come yeah. f- fix this. This is not what we signed up for. No. Like if someone put poison in your pool when they were cleaning it, it's like, no, no, come get the poison out oh, of my fucking pool. We can't pool. swim in it. Yeah, we like fix the fucking pool. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a recall. Like when they recall food all the time. Yeah, it's like your car has a uh a defect and, and you could crash there, you there could was, crash there was the doors hurt. that were catching on fire right? it's like oh yeah sometimes the brakes don't work but let us know how it goes like what <laughs> bitch fix the brakes yeah, exactly exactly mr jones thanks for the 10 my second super chat appreciate you newest menace general here i need to come to ohio and kick it with y'all for a college football saturday please well pull up let's go yeah pull up and i need to know in the chat who was going to the uh glenville game today too James, thanks for the five. I think everyone can agree that no matter what, football makes life better. Also, finally signed up for my bookie. Let's make some money. Go Bucks! Sign up for the Patreon too while you're here. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. Thanks you, James. I agree, bro. I'm so I'm so excited for football. I damn near cried last week watching high school football on TV. Absolutely, it, it, it's it's so good to be back. Jared, thanks for the two. How's how hasn't the show blown up yet? I mean, it's blown up decently. Blown up a little bit, but we are. I mean, we do kind of get blackballed. Like, if you look at like the charts, you see us in like the top fifteen, top ten. It's like, damn, <laughs> someone's got the thumb on it. Upstairs. It's all good. It, it's hey, it's the growth is is growing. Mm-hmm. Like the show is growing. That's all I care about. I mean, mm-hmm. should it happen faster or sooner? It doesn't matter. Yep, we're showers and growers over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we throw this one up. Oh no, I'm tripping. Shane, thanks for the five. Seems like TDs in the red zone have been the Achilles heel for Ryan Day in big games. Does Ohio State need to be more physical in the run game? Mm, paging Justin Fry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's been my my biggest critique is the lack of gap schemes hurts you down in the red zone, right? Because stretch is not a great low red zone play. Gap schemes running right at them is the way to go. And the red zone offense needs to improve without a doubt. That's not, I mean, that's, there's nothing false about that statement. Clamp, thanks for the two. Love the show. Just curious, the year three outlook for Menace to Sports. The three-year outlook. Three-year outlook. Oh, my bad. Well, it's growth. It's it's just all about growth. I mean, it's all about the show leveling up to become one of the biggest sports shows on YouTube. We're a top 25 show right now trying to become a top 10 show. It's just all about growth and then expansion. Mm -hmm. I mean, making this a network and a brand. Yeah, and and you guys really just want to keep it true to you, too. We don't want... We don't want to kind of get lost. I mean, the, next, the next level that we have, hopefully this fall, is we're going to launch a, a legit badass website. And, and we'll get off Patreon. We'll be able to fu- funnel all our content through there. And, and it's going to be awesome. Gorky, thanks for the two. I am sick AR was drafted and not DTR. Loser <laughs> Colts. <laughs> Oh, boy. Gorky, you're down to ride. Don't worry, I've been there before. My team drafted Daniel Jones. Tim, thanks for the 10. What's the best streaming service for sports if you can't get cable? I don't know the answer to that. We'll have to, we'll have to rely on the uh, on the chat for that. Yeah, that's really – that's definitely, definitely a chat. I mean, question. I use YouTube TV. That's what I use. I can't – but I can't get any um, Ohio professional sports other than NFL. Like, you, I, I can't watch baseball, essentially. Right. <laughs> Nick, thanks for the 10. For Super Chat. Long-time listener, Bucket graduate living in Ann Arbor. Wow, look at you Woo! across enemy lines. That is something. What are the chances that Devin Brown can help the offense capitalize on short yardage situations? Anytime you have QB run, I mean, it's 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 a big threat. We just watched the Swamp Kings documentary, Tim Tebow. I mean, any because you, you equate numbers, right? You, they, they, have, they only have one extra hat. If you hand the ball off and don't read someone, the quarterback can't run. They have two extra hats in short yardage because it's just numbers, right? The quarterback, it's 11 on 11. And if you hand the ball off and the quarterback can't run, you have nine blocking 11. It's just simple elementary numbers. So when the quarterback can run, now you got 10 on 11. 
Also, Devin Brown, I think, is a 4'6 kid, 4'5, four, 4'6, four, and he's a little bit bigger than people realize. He's 6'3, 215, 220, and you'll take that in short yardage situations every time. Oh, absolutely. And he's a kid that wants to wants to run and wants to run somebody over. Zach, we got more Super Chats, but I do want to get to the coach's film room. Or not the coach's film room, the coach report. Coach report, Swamp Kings. Yep. The real untold story. Do me a favor. As you watch, if you like it, like the video. We only got 187 likes, 800 people in here. That's some bullshit. Mm -hmm. Come on, Army. Pull up for me. Quick word from one of our sponsors. Like the video. Be right back with the coach's report. Swamp Kings. The true untold stories. You know how we do on this show. We got hump day, one Wednesday, freaky Fridays. Every day we're trying to get that bump and grind going. And I got the perfect product for you. Because there's nothing worse than then maybe not performing your best when it comes time to lay down with somebody. And all you got to do is go over to Blue Chew right now, and you can get the same active ingredients that is in Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, and make sure you're full-on hard, ready to roll. It's really, really simple process. You go to bluechew.com, you have a quick little assessment with a doctor, and right now, with promo code MENACE, you get the whole first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. I promise you, you will not regret it. If you want to perform your best, be your biggest, strongest, fullest self, go over to bluechew.com right now. Use our promo code MENACE and try it for free. Do you need it? I don't know. Does it work? We'll find out. It is free to try. We only got to pay $5 shipping. I guarantee you, Menace Army, you will thank me. Go to Blue Chew right now. Use our promo code and try it out for free. All right, let's talk about Swamp Kings or AKA the fluff piece that Netflix did at Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer's uh, request. Uh, when I watched it, I talked about it a little bit this week, but I wanted to give you all week to, to watch all four episodes so that I could fill in the holes. What I'm not going to do is go through and do an entire documentary about that time. I'm going to just fill in the holes for you. What, they'll, what else they should have brought up and should have said and the stories they should have told because they ignored so much, good and bad. I mean, some great stories, unbelievable stories that – Paint Urban in a great light. And not, not Urban, but the program, the tenure, in a great light. And then a bunch of stories they don't tell you that paint it in a bad light. Because it was. It was it was a it was a, a, a t it was a it was kind of a Jekyll and Hyde time, right? So many magical great things happen, but so many dark things happen. And so if you're gonna do an, an untold stories documentary, you should tell the fucking stories, Netflix. Netflix, you soft ass. That it, it was a fluff piece and I could bitch about it all day long, but let's fill in the holes. I want to start with kind of the, they 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 did a good job covering kind of the the off season program, especially initially arriving, trying to force guys to quit. Same thing he did at Ohio State. Same thing he did at Bowling Green. Same thing he did at Utah. Which is an it's how you implode a culture and rebuild it from the ground up. It, it, it's it's it, it works right. And you get into the 20, 2005 season, year one. Obviously, you know trying to turn around a Ron Zook team. And, and they didn't mention Ron Zook, by the way, which which is bizarre to me because Ron Zook didn't do a great job coaching Florida and developing his players and winning games, but he was a great recruiter now. Urban walked in the door, and he had a loaded, loaded roster that, that netted a national championship in year two. Now, a lot of that had to do with, you know, Percy Harvin played a big role. Tim Tebow played a small but big role in that 2006 season. But Ron Zook left the cupboard full. That's that's one thing that is that's undisputed. You get to 2005, and, and it's kind of a cakewalk going into the Alabama game. They talked about the 31 to three, just dragging that that Alabama put on Urban Meyer. But what they didn't dive into and should have is how Alabama just exposed this triple option spread offense that Urban Meyer ran, that Rich Rod ran, kind of you know that that spread offense with triple option in it. They Alabama exposed it because of how great athletes defensive ends and linebackers were. They could play both the running back and the quarterback because they're so close to them. And and what what happened after the game? I mean, it was Florida was awful. Four of sixteen on third down, two of five on fourth down. They didn't even mention Tyrone Prothrow, one of the most dominant receiver receiving performances I've seen. He had five catches, 134 yards, and two touchdowns. And the fact that Mike Shula left him in the game late when they were blowing us out is still one of the biggest crimes against an athlete I've ever seen as he snapped his leg in a compound fracture and still has trouble walking. Never played football again. But dominant game. I want to give him his flowers because he was ridiculous. But after that game was really where the, the – Urban Meyer offense was was reborn. I mean, it was dominant at Bowling Green in Utah on a much less athletic level of football. But there was a massive, I mean, knockdown, dragout, staff, 
I mean, melee. It was a war because it got exposed. And they had a guy on staff named Steve Adazio, fucking Italian tough O-line coach, who he's going to tell, tell you what the fuck he thinks. He doesn't give a fuck. You're the head coach, president of the United States. He doesn't give a shit. He turns like this and goes, yeah, but let me tell you something. And then he'll, he's going to tell you what he thinks. Well, guess what? In that staff meeting on Sunday, watching the film, he told Dan Mullen and Urban what he thought. That you need to play with a tight end. You can't win at this level without without a, a tight end or fullback or something. And they fought about it. I'm talking about motherfucking each other. Talking about like why why they weren't successful in the past. It was it got personal, and huge blow up. Urban ended up trusting Steve Adazio. They ended up putting in a tight end. That's where Tate Casey's career was born. Tate Casey was a tight end on roster. We didn't play with a tight end. Didn't have one. Billy Latsko was a fullback. They moved him to linebacker. They're like, we don't have fullback. Sorry. And uh, then they end up losing. We end up losing to LSU. Uh, Jamarcus Russell, by the way, this is when I knew he was going to be a bust. He went 14 of 22 with two interceptions. Fucking atrocious. Joseph Adai, the running back, was dominant. Had 100, like 160 yards rushing. He was great. But what happened, what you really found out that year was, not only was the offense needed to evolve, but the pass game was abysmal. 11 of 30 for 107 yards against LSU. It was really bad. And that, that season continued, ended up beating Iowa in, in the Outback Bowl. And then the, the, they signed the number two class in the country. And, and we're going to talk about kind of how it fell off when it fell off. But that was huge, right? Not only did Ron Zook leave a, a, a full cupboard, you bring in some of the guys that Urban brought in that had instant impacts like Tebow and Percy, and you've taken it to that next level. But But – the one thing that pissed me off talking about 2006 about the document documentary is they brushed over Chris Leak and acted like Tebow was the reason for the 2006 national championship. Make no mistake. Tebow had a very small and important role, a short yardage back, but Chris Leak was fucking dominant. I mean, he's a Florida Gator record holder in attempts, completions, yards. I mean, tied for second in touchdowns. He was an absolute beast throwing the football and they just brushed over it. Like, Oh yeah, they had Chris Leak. But anyways, back to Tebow. It's like, what? Give that man his flowers. He was a great player. A Ron Zook recruited great player. And a big reason that we won that national championship. The other thing that pissed me off about 2006 is they didn't even talk about the best player we had on defense. Marcus Thomas. They called him Trap. One of the best D-tackles I've ever seen in, in 2005 to now. What is that, 20 years? One of the best D-tackles I've ever seen. He had an addiction problem. He was in all the pills, Molly, ecstasy, weed, like all the drugs. He was into all of them. If, if, if there's a drug out there, he was into it. And Urban was trying like hell to get this kid to quit doing drugs. He he was in rehab shit. I, I had to drive him every day. My, I, that was, I was an intern. I wasn't a GA yet. So every day during practice, I would drive him to rehab, sit there, and drive him back and catch the second half of practice. It was, it was insane trying to get him back. But he ended up failing another drug test. And finally, Urban had to kick him off the team for drugs. Our best defensive player. So all this soft on, on players, it, it, it doesn't fit every narrative. He Urban believed in giving them chances. But at some point, when you lead the horse to water, you shove his head in the fucking in the in the lake and try to get him to drink. If you won't swallow the water, at some point, you got to cut bait. And that happened with Marcus Thomas. Most players tried to get right. That's why he didn't just get rid of players. But that defensive line in 2006 was fucking insane. One of the best D lines I've ever seen. Jarvis Moss, Derek Harvey, Ray McDonald, after two ACLs still ended up being a starter for the San Francisco 49ers. Marcus Thomas, I just talked about. Joe Cohen, Steve Harris, who was in the documentary. Just a ridiculous, ridiculous defensive line. That loss to Auburn was obviously the only blemish, and, and, and I wanted to bring it up only because when they blocked that punt, essentially to win the game, that's the loudest moment I've ever heard in a state. Shaking. It felt like an earthquake. It was insanity. Obviously went on to win the national championship against Ohio State. You know, they, they did a decent job, uh, I guess, covering the successful things that happened. So I'm not going to dive too much into that. But then you fast forward to the next year, 2007, lose a bunch of defensive players. This is Tebow's Heisman year. Of course, no mention of Percy Harvin. Imagine Urban not wanting to talk about that. Percy Harvin in 2007 obviously had an impact as a freshman in 2006. 2007, he's going to be one of the best players in college football. But Percy had issues, right? Whether it's, I, I'm not here to diagnose it nor put any anything out about him, but whether it's bipolar or just he just was a head case, it doesn't matter. I mean, he, he went, we went one point, we're Friday about to fly to South Carolina, and Percy decided not to show up. He didn't, he's, he's not going to go to the game. He doesn't want to play in that game. No reason, not hurt, healthy, not sick. He just doesn't want to go. 
plane sitting on the tarmac. Like we're sitting at the facility waiting. We're trying to find Percy, calling him. People are running to his apartment trying to get him. Can't find him. Doesn't make the trip. Not, never, never discussed. Or the fact that he beat the shit out of Chris Rainey pre-practice one day for no fucking reason. Like Chris Rainey's walking by, said, what up, Pete? And he just fucking boom, went over there and started beating his ass. Got kicked out of practice. Didn't talk about that. Didn't want to bring up the fact that he choked out his position coach in a meeting room. In the middle of a meeting, in the story, I, I was sitting in the back of the meeting room. There was, they we we signed, I say we, I wasn't recruiting, so I was just there. I was like an intern. But Billy Gonzalez and Urban Meyer signed two of the best receivers in the country, Percy Harvin and Jared Faison in 2006. There was a, a little bit of jealousy from Jared Faison to Percy Harvin because Percy was blowing up into this national superstar and Jared was playing, but he just wasn't Percy. And so he, he had a little jealousy there. Well, they're in a meeting room and... And Billy Gonzalez is ripping Jared Faison's ass for something. And Jared Faison said, man, you wouldn't say that shit if, you were, if Percy did it. And Percy turned around and said, hey, man, keep my fucking name out your mouth. And Jared Faison looked at him and said, Percy, Percy, Percy. So Percy starts beating Jared Faison's ass. Or they're fighting. He wasn't beating his ass. They start squaring up fighting. Billy Gonzalez tries to break it up. He didn't do anything wrong. Percy turned around, snapped, put him up against the wall, choked the shit out of him. And all this commotion's going on. And thank God Charlie Strong's the next room over because I ain't jumping in. Percy will whoop my ass. I, I ain't stupid. Like, I stood up. Like, what the fuck should I do? But Charlie Strong, the, the next meeting room over, comes in to see what's going on, breaks it up. No, don't want to discuss that, though. Right? Because guess what? Percy Harvin played that week. He played the next week. He played the week after that. It caused a lot of issues in the locker room. Like, damn, we're just going to let this motherfucker get away with anything because he's a great player. Jared Faison ended up transferring to Illinois, had an okay career. And then Percy, then going into the next year, he fails a drug test. So he's going to be suspended for the first couple games. Guess what? Guess what Percy decided? I need to have surgery on my foot in August. They had a meeting with all the team doctors and trainers. Percy, his mom, Urban, Billy Gonzalez, everybody. The doctors are saying, we're looking at the x-rays. You don't need surgery. He said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, it's my fucking foot. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm getting surgery. So he got, they, they actually performed foot surgery on him. And guess what that meant? Ah, oh, he's in a boot, can't play the first two games. Meanwhile, he actually failed a drug test, but he did have surgery. I mean, it wasn't a lie, but it was just convenient how on x-rays didn't need a surgery. Come to find out, he got or he ended up giving him surgery anyways. So that, that year, the 2007 year, obviously young on defense, ended up losing four games, including the last game, lost to Michigan. So we need to change the the, the room at Urban's Pint House to the 7-1 and one room. It's not a 7-0 and o room. He's not 7-0 and o against Michigan. He's 7-1, and one, which is still outstanding. I, I can't, I mean, I've never been a head coach, let alone beaten Michigan seven straight times. An unbelievable accomplishment, but let's not lie. It's 7-1. and one. Let's change the name of the fucking room. I told the hostess one time, she was really confused. Um, but that Michigan team, I'll tell you this, that, that, that was the same Michigan team in 2007 that lost to Appalachian State game one. We all know it, the greatest upset in the history of football. That was one of the most talented teams in the country, but they were just devastated with injuries all year, coming out of training camp in that App State game. And guess what? They were healthy for that game. They looked, they were a great football team. That, that Michigan team also had Scott Leffler and Vance Bedford on it, who ended up coming to work for Florida, but more on that later. 2008 rolls around. Obviously, you know the, the story. Beat Oklahoma, lost to Ole Miss, blah, blah, blah. All the, all the You know all the shit that you can Google and, and, the, and the couple like meeting team meetings that you saw. But the stats they could have mentioned, the defense, 26 interceptions. That would have led the country every year since 2008 except for one. In 2011, South uh, NC State had 27. Just ridiculous secondary. Joe Hayden, Ahmad Black, Major Wright, and Janoris Jenkins. I could argue it was the best secondary in college football history. The whole secondary came back in 2009. They didn't even mention the Pouncey Twins. The Pouncey Twins are far more important in this national championship than Tim Tebow when it comes to leadership, culture, the team. They were the identity. They went so fucking hard. They had such high juice and energy. Practice was lit because of them. They drove the team. Netflix didn't even mention them. The most important players on the team, by far, were the Pouncey Twins. They didn't even bring up David Nelson. What a story, an opportunity missed. David Nelson was a fifth-year guy. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This was 2008, so he would have been five, six, seven. So he was a fourth-year guy, redshirt his freshman year, had never really played, never really caught a pass, never cracked a lineup, didn't even play on special teams. And Steve Adazio, midseason, decided, you know what? I'm going to get something out of this kid. He grabbed David Nelson and said, listen, you don't really have a role in this team. I'm going to make you the center on kickoff return. Own it. Make it your role. Help this team out. Be a good teammate. And he did. And he was great. So much so that Urban made Billy Gonzalez start to play him late in the game. 
He first catch of the game, garbage time against Kentucky, 38-yard touchdown. Next game, second catch of the year, 41-yard touchdown against Vanderbilt. By, by the year's end, this kid that I'm telling you, week four of the season, didn't play a snap. Not one snap on any special team or offense or defense. By the end of the year, massive touchdown against Alabama in the SEC championship game. The game-winning touchdown against Oklahoma to seal the national championship. No mention of David Nelson. Why? I don't know. That, that's a great story. They should have told that story. But what I did want to talk about is something they definitely should have brought up is that loss to Ole Miss. They talked about it. Jevin Sneed, former Florida commit, ends up flipping, going to Ole Miss. He comes in to the swamp, beats the Gators on a blocked extra point. Florida loses 31-30 at the end of the game. Well, let's talk about why that happened. I'm going to tell you a little story about a guy named Ronnie Wilson. Big Ronnie, they called him. Oh, Big Ronnie had some issues. He had a aggravated assault and battery charge. Use of display of a concealed weapon during commission of a felony in April of 2007 for shooting an AK-47 rifle in the air after a dispute with another man. That was a core value. No guns. He ended up uh, pleading no contest. The felony charge was reduced to a misdemeanor, and he was placed on two years probation. He was kicked off the team. Guess what he was allowed to do, though? Oh, then he, oh, he also got a misdemeanor possession of marijuana in January 2008. But guess what happened? We were thin on linemen. So Urban broke his core value, right? If you had a gun, got charged with a gun charge, his program value was you were fucking gone. Out. That's a, that's a character issue. That is not fixable. You're out. No guns. It was right there on every wall in every facility he ever coached in. But we needed linemen. So he bought, brought Big Ronnie back. And guess what Big Ronnie did? He made the field goal team. Guess what else he did? He flat was lazy as shit. He didn't play. He played All he played on was field goal, an extra point. He just decided not to block on that play. Ole Miss blocks the extra point, win, wins the game by one. No mention of Big Ronnie and Urban's decision to let him come back on the team in 2008 and how, how he cost that team an undefeated season. But never, never mind that. He ended up getting another battery charge, a bunch of other shit, and getting kicked off the team a second time, mainly because he, he didn't block on extra point against Ole Miss. Go on to win the national championship. Magical run. Tebow's promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all really, really good stuff. Already covered by Swamp Kings. Then you go to 2009, right? Fast forward one year. Lost some pieces, but for the most part, everybody's coming back except for one person, Dan Mullen. Got the Mississippi State job. So Steve Adazio becomes the coordinator. There's no one really to help him with, with the throw game. In comes Scott Leffler, who's a good friend of mine, phenomenal football coach. More about that marriage between him and Urban later. But that was truly what happened. We didn't. We had a ridiculous run game because Steve Dazio was calling it. We were good in the throw game. We had Tebow and good skill. I was helping Steve in the throw game more than anyone, not to tout, tout my uh, myself, but it's just reality. I, I've talked about it before on the show. Justin Fry was the O-line GA. He was helping Steve with the run game. I was helping Steve with the throw game. We were the two most valuable people on staff. If you go back and ask Steve, he'll he'll tell you that. But losing Dan Mullen hurt. Of he brings in Scott Leffler to evolve the the throw game. Right, help Tebow become an NFL quarterback. That was the whole goal. And that's what he told Scott to do. But every time Scott tried to do that, put in an NFL passing concept, Urban would flip his shit about Scott. Scott's coming in here. We're national, returning national champs. He's trying to change the offense. He's calling me in his office, a GA, like, hey. You need to spy. You need to tell me what he's doing in there. Spy on him for me. I'm like, God damn, you can't. You're going to make me spy on it, I, which I never did. Scott's a good friend of mine now, probably because I wasn't some snitch going to Urban like, well, Scott said this and did this and did that. But this bad marriage between Scott Leffler and Urban Meyer was a precursor to Urban handling it the right way in 2017 when he brought in Ryan Day to do the same thing. I don't believe had he done that and had such a bad result for bringing Scott Leffler in, I don't think he would have approached it differently in 2017. So I think that a lot of what we're seeing today is a result of that error as a head coach in 2009. Urban learned from it. We get to the SC Championship game. How does Swamp Kings not going to mention the best defensive end in college football got a DUI right before the SC Championship game? Carlos Dunlap goes out on a Thursday, gets all fucked up and drunk, falls asleep at the wheel, gets a DUI, gets suspended for the game, can't play. And we're without one of the best players in college football against the best team in college football, that 2009 Alabama team. I, why they don't mention it, I have no idea. Then after that game is when shit hits the fan. They didn't even bring up Shelly calling 911. Didn't play the audio for you. Luckily, I got it for you. Here's Shelly's 911 call 
when Urban, I guess, took a, a Ambien and 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 wine cocktails and just almost died. Here's here's Shelly calling nine one one. Yes, Urban. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. My husband's having chest pain. He's having chest pain. He just woke up in the middle of the night, so he's having chest pain. Okay, Sam, and I were going to be on the I have a few questions for you, okay? Okay. Urban. Okay. Urban. Are you with the patient now? I can't, I can't reach him. He's on the other side of the floor. Okay, but you're with him now? Yes. Okay. How old is he? 45. Okay, is he awake? Urban. Urban, talk to me. Urb. I can't see. I can't see. Okay, Urban. Okay, so he's on the other side of the bed? Yes. I see him moving. I see him moving. Okay, so he is awake? Urban, Urban, talk to me, please. Yeah, yeah, he is. Urban. Is there a reason why you can't get to him on the side of the bed? Because I'm on a house phone. I didn't call on the uh, cell phone. Okay, but he is awake? Yes. Is he breathing? Yes. Yes, I see him breathing. Okay, Dylan, we're going to get someone out there. I have a few more questions. Okay. Is he completely alert? Urban, talk, Urban, please. I mean, just wild, right? Wild. And, and what I want to talk about with that is this, this is Urban Meyer. He puts so much pressure on himself. And a lot like 2015, very, very eerie how similar they are. He realized he fucked this whole thing up. And it just crippled him. And so he was having to take Ambien to sleep and drinking wine at night. And that cocktail combination fucked him up. Also, he has a cyst in his brain. All this shit happened. I mean, you could say, oh, he, he made up. Eh, that shit ain't made up. You hear his wife talking about, she can't even get him awake. Like he is fucking, something's wrong. And it was having to take Ambien pills to sleep because he couldn't sleep at night because he just had so much, much angst about winning. He put such a priority and pressure on winning national, the national championship that it broke him. And then in bowl prep that year, one day we go out to practice and I notice he's just walking around kicking, kicking the grass, not paying attention to practice. Our One of our assistant strength coaches, Frank Perino, comes up to me. He goes, hey, this motherfucker's about to, about to quit. I was like, what do you mean? I look over, like, holy shit, he's not even paying attention to practice. He's the most intense coach in America. Like, in the middle of every drill, screaming, veins popping out of his neck. He's over there just kicking grass during practice. He ended up re resigning, and we end up beating the shit out of Cincinnati in a bowl game, and then he ends up not resigning. He ends up taking a five-month, a four-month hiatus while Steve Adazio ran the program. No mention of that in Swap Kings. No mention of Steve Adazio being the acting head coach through spring ball. And really, the whole offseason until Urban decided to come back and be the head coach. But the turning point was this. In 2006, they went out and signed the number two class in the country. Tim Tebow, Percy Harvin, Carl Johnson, Brandon Spikes, Riley Cooper, Brandon James, star-studded. 2007, same thing. Cam Newton, Pouncey Twins. Cam Newton, by the way, did they mention Cam Newton was there? Carlos Dunlap, Aaron Hernandez, Major Wright, Chris Rainey, Ahmad Black. Just ridiculous classes. After those two classes, you saw a change in recruiting. They still signed the number three class in 2008, but it wasn't great evaluation. It was star chasing, poor evaluation. I mean, they're five stars. Carl Moore, okay player. Will Hill, decent player. Matt Patchen, injured, never played. Omar Hunter, not a great player. The only real players in that class were Janoris Jenkins, Jenkins and Frankie Hammond and, and Jeff Demps. But those were not highly recruited kids. And Frankie Hammond and Jeff Demps were just oh, decent players, right? 2009 class, 11th in the country. So you saw a change in recruiting that the Percy Harvins weren't there. Like, they, they didn't have another Reggie Bush coming in. Those two classes, along with the Zook recruiting, really well before the 2006 championship, built the mini dynasty. After that, the shitty evaluation in recruiting is where the downfall started personnel-wise. They did sign the number two class in the, in the country in uh, 2010, right before he actually resigned. So we could, you can miss me with the cupboard being bare for Will Muschamp. But 2010, it really broke Urban. Because Billy Gonzalez comes in, no mention of this, resigns and takes a job at LSU because Greg Studrawa, the old O-line coach from Bowling Green, who he ended up hiring at Ohio State, was offered a coordinator at LSU and, offer, and, and offered Billy Gonzalez a receiver job. Billy Gonzalez played for Urban at Colorado State. Urban brought him all the way, Bowling Green, Utah, Florida. He And, and was his position, position coach in college. Billy Gonzalez leaves to go to LSU, and he doesn't tell him, doesn't look him in the eye, shake his hand, tell him about it. No. He put his dealer car key on his desk. He said, going to LSU, buy Billy G. And that was the last they ever spoke. Just deuces. My former position coach, just out. So he brings in Zach Azani, who I just saw on Hard Knocks as the wide receiver coach of the Jets. Horrible hire. He could not handle 
Urban Meyer. I mean, so much so that they were in a game one time and Urban was just, you know, Urban's insane on game day. He was motherfucking Zach Azani. Zach Azani started crying and said, stop yelling at me during the game. Just wild shit. But now they have Zach Azani and Scott Leffler trying to run the throw game for Steve Adazio, who's O-line coach OC. Horrible, horrible situation. They lost three straight in a row at Bama, LSU at home, Mississippi State at home to Dan Mullen. That was the crippling blow. Watch it. Losing to Dan Mullen with this atrocious offense, that, that was the end. Then they lost to South Carolina home and then lost to Florida State, five-loss team. He was out. Done. Urban was extreme. Is extreme. Some people just crumble under the pressure. Like I said, Zach Azani couldn't handle it. Some people thrive. The perfect example is his director of uh, player personnel, Mark Pantone. Mark Pantone was created and developed in this crucible of pressure. And he became the best personnel guy in college football. His predecessor, a guy named Bob Lasavita, this motherfucker couldn't handle it. So much so that one day he got blown up on because an official visit weekend was all fucked up. He went home and got a gun and was going to Urban Meyer's house to kill him. That's real. Doc Holliday, who brought Bob Lasavita from NC State, had to drive and stop him from killing Urban Meyer. Those are the extremes. One extreme makes you want to commit murder. The other extreme, Mark Pantone, became the best personnel guy in the country. Some do, some don't. Some people can handle it, some people cannot. Urban Meyer brought out the best in some, but did not bring out the best in others. Um, then, then we know about the arrests. I'll say this. 70% of the arrests were for possession of marijuana, which in my opinion is a fucking nonsense. Nonsense. I know it was illegal. I, I know it was a bigger deal back then. Culturally, I don't, I, everyone smoked weed. Every program in the country, all those kids were smoked marijuana. At Ohio State, they did. Everywhere. Alabama, they did. Whatever school you're a fan of, they smoke weed. Get over it. Now, there were some, some very non-marijuana offenses like Aaron Hernandez. We all, I mean, there's conflicting reports if he shot in, into a car. They actually went back and, and, investigated it a second time and, and concluded that he was not the one that shot into this car, that it, it was an African-American male, not a Hispanic. And, and whether he did or didn't, everything Aaron Hernandez did was after he left Florida. I don't know what Urban's supposed to do about that. We talked, they talked about Avery Atkins, really sad, sad story. Carl Johnson, they had him on there as some moral compass. Like, I don't want to tell my kids that, that, that. Carl Johnson had a misdemeanor violation of sexual restraining order in February. Justin Fry had a, Take him to class every every class because he couldn't act right. He was sexually harass, harassing. They had restraining orders on him. Girls did because he was harassing them. And I just love how they had him on there. That, that was one. Cam Newton, felony count of burglary, larceny, and obstruction of justice because he stole a laptop. And when they came to, I guess, arrest him or interview him about it, threw it out the window and got kicked out of school because of it. No, no mention that Cam Newton even played at Florida. Jamar Hornsby. That was a fun one. He has like a, a couple of charges. The worst one was we had a walk-on quarterback, Michael Guilford, rest in peace. Him and him and a friend of his, Ashley Slonin, were on his motorcycle one night and it wrecked and they both tragically lost their lives. So rest in peace to them. Well, Jamar Hornsby had her credit card. And after she died, he just kept using it. The dead girl's credit card. And so he got charged with unauthorized use of a credit card to obtain goods and services, which was a felony. Got kicked off the team. He later committed to Ole Miss out of JUCO and got another arrest felony for having brass knuckles and punching somebody. So really great kid. Tony Joyner, no mention of him. Captain of the team, Tebow's roommate. Had, went, he broke into an impound lot and stole his girlfriend's car back. Okay, I mean, not a horrific crime, but he is in prison right now for killing his girlfriend. So two murderers on the team. There's this overwhelming feeling out there that, that the players were, were out of control and that is what broke Urban. That's not what broke Urban Meyer at Florida. What broke Urban Meyer at Florida was staff turnover and shitty hires. You look at his staff in 2005, the OG staff. Offense, Dan Mullen, John Hevesy is the line coach. Steve Adazio, tight ends, he ends up becoming the line coach. Billy Gonzalez is former player. Stan Drayton, Ryan Day is the GA. On defense, Charlie Strong, Greg Madison, Chuck Heater, Doc Holliday. Just ridiculous staff. Mickey Marotti, the head strength coach. The second in command in the strength room is Matt Bayless, who just randomly resigned at Notre Dame, but been a longtime head strength coach. Frank Perino was third in charge. He's the head strength coach for the Tennessee Titans and Mike Vrabel. Just a ridiculous staff. 2006, 2007, same staff. So the th first three years, same staff. In 2008, Greg Madison left to go to the Ravens. Doc Holliday goes to West Virginia. And 
Two big losses, but he did a great job bringing in Vance Bedford from Michigan and Dan McCarney, two really good football coaches. They were great hires. Dan Mullen got basically forced Stan Drayton to leave because he's a bully-ass bitch. He, he had Urban convinced that Stan Drayton was a bad football coach. Stan Drayton is one of the best running back coaches I've ever been around. And Steve Adazio would tell you the same. So Stan Drayton went to Tennessee, and they brought in Kenny Carter, what, the worst football coach I've ever been around. Not only did he sexually harass every secretary in there just disgustingly, but he was dumb as fuck, like incredibly dumb. <laughs> we went to play New Mexico one, one year, and I've told this story before, but he looked at me and he said, you imagine, you think their players have to get passports when they go to school? And I was like, huh? And he was like, well, at least it's in New Mexico and not Old Mexico. I'm like, this motherfucker doesn't know New Mexico is a state in the United States of America. He thought he was thought we were gonna have to get passports for our players to go play New Mexico or some shit. It was wild, horrible hire. Then it then in 2009, Dan Mullen leaves. John Hevesy goes with him to Mississippi State. Steve becomes the OC. Brian White comes in as a tight end coach. I talked about it. Horrible marriage. Brian White, great football coach, great hire. He did an outstanding job. Steve had no help on offense. Billy was pissed he didn't get promoted. Scott was asked to transform the, the throw game, but Urban would explode if he put in a new play. And Brian Wright was, White was great. Kenny Carter, fucking idiot. Defensive staff was solid. Then 2010, it absolutely imploded. Charlie took the Louisville job, took Vance Bedford with him. Urban hires Terrell Austin, who's now the Steelers D coordinator, and DJ Durkin on defense. Defense was still good, but he brings in Zach Azani for Billy G. Horrible. A couple players I want to mention that they never mentioned because they deserve to be mentioned if you talk about the arrow. One, Earl Everett. Great player, great person. He The helmetless sack on Troy Smith that made him a legend. I mean, so much so that he got pulled over after that game driving to Jacksonville, and the cop wrote him a ticket, or maybe he let him off. But then, like, five minutes later, he's flying down the highway to pull him over again because he told his wife about it, and she wanted an autograph. That's how big of a superstar Earl Everett was. Bubba Caldwell, didn't even mention him. Three-year starter, wide receiver, all-time reception leader in Florida history at 185. Great player, good person, played in the NFL. Lewis Murphy. And, and, and the story about him and, and him growing into a great college football player, the story of him losing his mom to cancer and, and how that motivated him to become a major player in 2007, 2008, and a, and a big-time player, a great player. Ryan Smith, the corner that transferred from Utah and started at, at, at Florida is another one. Reggie Nelson, the best post safety I've seen in college, a big-time hitter and range safety. Marcus Gilbert was a great offensive tackle, played in the NFL, now married to a former Buckeye, by the way, Miss Ohio, Madison Jesse Otto. Will Hill was a, a really good player, but Will Hill needed to be mentioned for his draft antics. Here's Will Hill, his profile picture. And then the tweets, one of the most entertaining draft stories ever. His Twitter was hilarious as it got exposed during draft prep. His tweet of blowing on that sour with mommy and a passenger giving me head. It's funny as hell when a blank pay a pot prostitute for sex and she give him the money back. Hashtag red. Or, morning America, day already started off crazy. Chick just offered me some ass if I massage her left breast. Shake my head, L-M-S-G-A-O. <laughs> or this one, this is a great one. It's 6.36 in the morning, and I hear a fucking knock at my door. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Come to find out it's my first fuck of the day. Sour. <laughs> I need a bitch with some fire head. Come through, suck me off, and don't let no nut hit the bed. Straight swallow. Sour. Or, chick trying to swallow my kids for Father's Day. One of the most entertaining draft uh sagas that played out they didn't mention that i thought that was a great comedy special they should have done how about jeff demps the 10 flat 100 meter silver medalist that played for urban or riley cooper crazy ass dude the story about him putting his fist through a window at, uh his after his senior at his graduation party his senior year because some kids came to his grad party he didn't want there just a crazy motherfucker and then the stuff that happened after when he's in the nfl the racial slur at a concert all that stuff all that stuff should have been mentioned so many things left out of the documentary. I just wanted to give you a little bit of my insight, fill in some of the gaps. We might have to do a part two if I think of some more stuff, but there you go. There's some actual real untold stories, some shit that no one else talks about, what Netflix should have put in the documentary. Thought I'd drop my my two cents for you to, to open some eyes into that era. All in all, I think Urban is, is a good person and a great football coach. I don't think you can actually blame him for trying to help players. Now, did he do a better job at Ohio State selecting maybe a little bit higher character recruits? Absolutely. But legend nonetheless. Quick word from our sponsor. We'll get Chris back in here. I appreciate you for hanging out. We'll get to our sponsors. We'll bring Chris back, back in right now. 
Hi, Menace Army. If you need the perfect, the best bed sheets that I've ever used, at least, you got to go to trymiracle.com forward slash menace. Miracle made sheets are incredible. They, they were inspired by NASA. They have this, this fabric that is infused with silver to keep you cool at night, to give you a great sleep. And it also self-cleaning. It eliminates up to 99.7% of bacteria growth. I don't know what you do in the bed. Sometimes there's some, some, you know, some fluids, some stuff going on, and you don't want to eat bacteria growing to give you acne, make you smell bad, and all that other stuff. These are the most luxurious and comfort and quality sheets I've ever owned. Justine and I use them every night. We had just ordered a second set so we can rotate them out. They're the best sheets I've ever owned. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria, man. It is gross. So all you got to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace. And not, they already have prices slash 40%. You'll get an additional 20% off with three free luxurious bath towels. They're really nice bath towels too. So all I need you to do, go to, go to trymiracle.com slash menace. Get that already slash 40% off pricing right now. Get an additional 20% off plus three free bath towels. Incredibly affordable, cheap, and they're the nicest sheets I've ever owned. Go check them out. Well, that was fun. Chris, nice to have you back. <laughs> what the fuck did I just listen to? <laughs> that was crazy entertaining, bro. Hashtag red. <laughs> Sour. My Sour. Man, my man Will Hill was a trip. <laughs> and then you have Brandon Spikes. Once he went to the Patriots on chat roulette with some Kim Kardashian lookalike blowing him. I mean, there's so many stories, bro. And what I, what I didn't get into and I meant to was kind of how the legal process went. Because there was an attorney in Gainesville. His name was Huntley Johnson. And, he, mm -hmm. and we had a guy on staff named Hiram DeFries. Hiram DeFries is one of the most phenomenal human beings I ever met. He's, he was a lawyer by trade, ended up working for Shell Oil, was the vice president of Shell Oil. He ran Shell Oil in the entire United States of America. So it's a, a Royal Caribbean, whatever, a British company, I believe. And he ran their America operations. And he played at Colorado State, got to know Urban when Urban was a receiver coach. He helped him. He was also a high school coach in Southern California, helped Urban recruit Southern California. Mm -hmm. And so when he retired... He wanted to be around football. So he just basically volunteered at Florida. Okay. First, at, first at Utah, because he's a Samoan guy, to help Ur Urban connect with the Samoan kids, and then went with him to Florida. He, but he was an attorney by trade, so he got to know Huntley Johnson. Huntley Johnson's represented every Florida player since like 1987 that's gotten arrested. And he knew all the judges, he knew all the prosecutors, and that shit just disappeared. Was he the fixer? He was the fixer, boy. And you, if you if, if you ain't hit the like button yet, how we got 1,100 people in here and only 397 likes? Whew. I'll do I'll, I'll do another I'll do part two if we get a thousand likes on this video. Yeah. Now let's go 2,000. 2, I need 2,000 likes on this video. I'll do part two. We need a thousand likes live. I think I think yeah. I think it's, it's a good yeah. standard. No, bro, that was going crazy, dude. I can't wait to segment that up. That was that was awesome. They're saying that's the real Swamp Kings. <laughs> the real Swamp Kings. <laughs> only here on Menace to Sports do we have no filter. Yep. That is fire. Do want to get these super chat, Zach, but I want to hit first Caleb Williams. He's uh, now reportedly unsure if he'll agree to be in the next EA Sports College football game. It's kind of what has been floated out there. This, to me, tells me that he's not coming back next year, even though he said he's undecided so far. Oh, he's, first of all, he's not coming back next year. He never was going to come back next year. That was the biggest cap. We brought the big cap out for it. Big cap. He definitely is not coming back. And this is what I said could happen, right? The Caleb Williams of, the, of college football – could be like, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. And then now that we're gonna get in contract negotiations with big time players. And the minute he says, all right, I'll do it for 10 grand, then Drake May is gonna be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute now. I'm big time too. And now we're gonna get a full on contract evaluations. Or it's either that or EA Sports doesn't have the best player in college football in their game. Well, I mean, if he leaves, I guess the timing of it would make sense. I mean, honestly, maybe the best thing for EA is for him to kind of declare for the draft so that he's not in the game either way. Because if he's in the game, they're going to have to pay him a shitload of money. Yeah, without a doubt. They're going to have to. USC plays tomorrow, bro. I don't know how excited you are about that, but I'm excited to kind of give it a look and I break it down. I don't – like, I just want football. I mean, I'm watching high school football, seventh grade football. I want college football. And I want to see – I don't care that they play San Jose State. Mm -hmm. I want to see Caleb Williams navigate the pocket, show the improvements he's made, even if it's against a bad team. I talk about it all the time. Even in games that are lopsided mismatches, you can take something away from it. And I cannot wait to get back in the film room and break down what we take away from it. Mm -hmm. Starting next week, shout out to Coach's Film Room. Get over there on Patreon. It's worth every penny, and if you don't like it, I'll refund you. It is. It's my favorite place in the world. Is the coach's film room? 
just sharing knowledge with college football fans, helping them grow their their knowledge and, the, and their passion for the sport. I love it. I'm excited to see Malachi Nelson because – Obviously, we know Caleb yeah. Williams has gone after the year. Yeah. Malachi Nelson was uh, the top quarterback on USC's board. He's a true freshman. They said he had a good spring. I'm excited because that'll probably be the quarterback that USC will have when they play the Ohio States, the Penn States of the world. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited about that, kind of to see if the hype is real or if he's going to be kind of another Spencer Rattler uh, over there for, for Lincoln Riley. And you're not going to be able to see that in one game, but I am excited to kind of see the freshman play. Yeah, just to see him out there playing college football. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm, absolutely. want to hit a couple super chats, Zach. We do have so many. It's really booming <laughs> right now. Boom, um, Ty, thanks for the 10. If you guys ever decide to come to Colorado, check out the to check out the Dion experiment. I'm in Denver. I can show you gents around Ohio State themed bar downtown called Haters. It's a blast. Oh, H. Hey, I'm telling you, this 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 fall is going to be. I, I hope here's my you talk about a three year plan. I hope this fall has a similar level up in a in a more you know, a larger propor larger pro proportion mm -hmm. to last year's. And if it is, that's gonna be the offseason. Yeah. We're 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 going places. Fuck it, I might just hit the road on a, on a Friday after we leave here. I drive so fucking much anyway. Right. I just hit the road and go somewhere. See where we end up. Tristan, thanks for the two. I appreciate you. Ooh, this is a great question from Shad. Thanks for the five. Zach, do you think Ryan was Urban's best hire he ever made, at least on the offensive side of the ball? Yes. Ooh, I quickly. really do. Quickly. I really do. I mean, he he's been, I think Tom Herman was a really good hire. Obviously, they they worked so well together. I mean, you could say Dan Mullen was a good hire, but he really brought Dan Mullen along like Dan Mullen was like a seven year GA. No one would hire him because he's such a little like little nerdy douchebag. Mm -hmm. And Urban was like, this kid, this, this guy's really smart, which he is. He's fucking brilliant. And so he hired him at Bowling Green and, and brought him all, along the ride. But Ryan Day, it was so necessary for him because he needed someone to evolve his offense into the present football, present yeah. day football. It was great back in 2001 at Bowling Green. By the time it was 2012, 2015 at Ohio State, it was like, all right, this just dried up. Like football has changed. Like you got so it was it was a critical hire. Corey, thank you for the five. I love seeing you in the chat, bro. What's good, y'all? Spreading positivity. Hope everyone's having an amazing day. Stay blessed. You stay blessed as well and have a great yeah, weekend, stay brother. Stay blessed and get your freak on. It's a freaky Friday, man. It is a freaky Friday. Oh, holy. Uh, Tristan, thanks for the two. Are you guys excited for the 12-team playoff? How do you feel about the 12-team playoff? I, I'm, I, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think they should have done it, but I'm here for it. It's going to mm -hmm. give us way more content. The season's going to go into basically February. Like, I'm absolutely he here for more football. I don't think it was the right move, but I'm okay with it. I'm great with it. I think this year would have been the perfect year for the 12-team playoff. Yeah. Next year, I kind of worry about a little bit, but this year would have been awesome. Everyone's breaking in a new quarterback. And one of the things that I would have liked, you know, that, that it's going to give us is, do you remember when um, USC lost those two games early and then went undefeated with Sam Darnold? Yes. That team, 12-team-wise, makes a 12-team playoff. Yep. And there was a talk about, this is one of the best teams in college football. They should absolutely be in the playoff hunt, but they weren't because they had the two losses early. So yeah. I'm excited for it. It has its ups and downs. <laughs> I think it works better if it's a, if there's, a truly a power five, <laughs> but now with it being a power two, with yeah, two, I mean, I mean, I'll be interested to see how they pivot now that the, the back twelve is falling apart. Like mm -hmm. what, what they're going to have to do something, but I think th they will, and I think it'll be a really good thing. James, thanks for the two Central Catholic at Toledo Whitmer tonight. Oh yeah, good there game. You go. There's a lot of I brought. Shout out, Coach football. Dempsey. Yeah, shout out, Coach Dempsey. Coach D, thanks for the five. Coach, do you think with the loss to Georgia, the Ohio State University had a bad taste in their mouth? Yeah, they felt like they 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 were. I mean, they were this. Anytime you're this close mm -hmm. to winning a national championship, I mean, you you don't forget that feeling. You don't. I mean, I think about 2015. I still <laughs> am not over it. I still can't forget that feeling. A bad taste in the mouth for sure. But also, I think that game being close was so important to keep this roster together. So yeah, me, well, me, that, and you, me and you had some talk with, with a couple people plugged in. Like, if this is a blowout, we could see some massive, oh, massive changes. Yeah, there, there, there were some people that, that might have been hitting the portal. It also was important because Georgia is is the new dynasty, right? Back-to-back mm -hmm. -back national champs, perfect 15-0 and 0 last year. And Ohio State was toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. So it's like, they're not far off. Like, they're right there. It makes you wonder. There's that argument that, like, Georgia played one of their worst games of the year and Ohio State played their best game of the year. I thought both teams played really good games. But it makes you wonder... Like, you're able to get your best game for that Georgia game, but we played so tight, or Ohio State played so tight against Michigan and couldn't give their best game. Yeah. Well, that's got to change. Something's got to change. <laughs> Alpha, thanks for the two. Appreciate the hard work y'all do in the longer show. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yep. 
Gorky, thanks for the two. Chris, Daniel Jones can pass the ball. This man can't. <laughs> <laughs> Want to talk Michigan real quick. So, obviously, we have the three-game suspension, self-imposed, um, after NCAA denied the four-game suspension. They said it's not enough. I've never seen this before. I don't know if I'm just new to it, but Michigan's official Twitter or official media team released the replacement coaches for the games. Made a cool little graphic, had coaching duties, and for the ECU game, it'll be Jesse Minter. For the UNLV game, they're splitting it by half, giving – Mike Hart a half and Jay Harbaugh a half. And then for the Bowling Green game, they're giving Sharon Moore the game. It's like, I've never seen this before. Good, bad, they're having fun with it. And what do I you mean, think about them having that many? I think, one, I think it's 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 great. Like, get those guys' names out there. It's similar to what Mike Vrabel did with the preseason in the Titans. Yeah. Uh, naming a different guy head coach every game. Um, I think it's funny because it is preseason. I mean, those three teams, they literally, there's they, they could just show up and they're going to win. So I also think it's like uh, taunting the NCAA a little bit. Like, oh, I'm suspended. Look at our cute little plan. We're going to have multiple head coaches. We're going to announce them as head coaches. We're going to actually put them in the Michigan program as being 1-0 and as a head coach. Like, fuck you, NCAA. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, it's a little odd because it's not preseason. I mean, mm. we just talked about 2007. Michigan lost to Appalachian State. God forbid they they lose, like, the, the UNLV game, and then he has to answer questions like, well, do you think maybe having one head coach for the whole game would have helped? Like it's 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 gonna be fine. It's all cute, but I don't know if I would do this. It is it is weird splitting it up like that. Yeah, and also like, can we stop taunting the NCAA? Because every time they do something to taunt the NCAA, NCAA gets more and more mad. Right. I, it's, it, I'm here for it. I just want to. So Jay Harbaugh is given is the first half of UNLV. So yeah. he gives the pregame speech. Mike Hart gives the halftime, yeah, halftime speech. Time. Who gives the conclusion speech at the end? Me. I'm going to go to Ann Arbor and I'm going to give the wrap up speech after the game. They're going to do it together like a comedy special when you got two people up on stage. It's going to it's going to be a blast. Zach, they're not going to lose that game, but if they do lose like say the UNLV game by some freak incident, should the playoff committee overlook that because of the coaching changes that kind of happened and went no, down? No. If they lose to a team like that, that's atrocious. Yeah. That's that's fair. I just thought I just thought I would ask. Also, I don't know if you saw Jack Harbaugh is getting the assistant head coaching job, and then uh, Ben Herbert is also becoming an associate head coach. So don't know what don't know what Jack's going to do out there. And he just he's just hanging out with his kid and loves Har Michigan. Well, he's not, oh yeah, the one kid. Yeah, I guess you're right. Those Harbaugh jeans are strong as shit, bro. <laughs> they all look they all look the same. <laughs> they look identical. I thought that was just like Jim Harbaugh in like one of those old face makeups. <laughs> I thought Jim Harbaugh's Snapchat gave him an old filter. <laughs> that might be what it is. And honestly, that's what he, Jim Harbaugh could and should do, right? That should be the case. Um, Zach, moving ahead a little bit. I don't know if you saw this. I found it very intriguing. Yesterday, Mel Tucker kind of spoke about some of the NIL issues they were having, kind of upset about a certain Big Ten team that has a war chest, you know, shout out to our guy, Jay, Jay Book, of between 12 and $13 million per year on NIL for recruits. He kind of said, how am I supposed to recruit against that? Like, we're able to get guys, but right now NIL is in a really, really bad place. Zach, first of all, who's he talking about? First of second all, of all, should he be talking all, about this? First of all, stop making excuses and complaining, because I promise you, the foundation, the new 1874, 69, 34 uh, society. 1738. They, they don't have $12 million, $13 million in cash assets to give out to recruits. If you're talking about like CJ Stroud inking a deal for seven figures, that's because he plays at Ohio State and is a massive superstar. Like Columbus has 2 million people in it. It's like the 15th biggest sit city in the country. There's big businesses here that want to have Ohio State players represent them. East Lansing doesn't. So move Michigan State to a big-ass city, and then maybe, like, what the fuck are you complaining about? I really, this this was disappointing to hear, because I thought Mel Tucker was a gangster. I thought he was that fucking confident, cigar in his mouth, ain't no excuses, we're coming for people's necks, throats. This motherfucker's out here complaining. I that, that That's disappointing to see. Bro, did you read the one quote? I read the, all the quotes. I don't know how we can expect to win the Big Ten and get in the playoffs and win a national championship if we don't have the best players. That felt like the most complaining I've I've heard from Mel. Well, he's feeling the pressure right now. He's a $10 million man and ain't winning. Is that the hot seat talking? That's the hot seat talking. He's got a burnt butt, and he he's don't know what to do. His ass hurts from, mm -hmm. from how hot his seat is. 
So it sounds like, I mean, I, I saw that uh, Jay Book listened to the Valentini show or whatever, Valenti show, that they're kind of, Michigan State's kind of putting out to all the local media there. It's Ohio State that has $12 million, and they're the reason right. we can't recruit. First of all, Ohio State and Michigan State do not recruit the same caliber players. No. They don't. Like, Michigan State is not going to beat Ohio State on a kid. No. Unless it's just some massively absurd NIL deal. But you know what? I'd stop complaining, and I'd get to work on building your NIL fund. Collectives. Build, like, get the collective going. If they're not raising enough money, help them out. Figure it out. You got big donors. Like, there's people with money that went to Michigan State. Call Draymond Green up. Yeah. Call Draymond Green. <laughs> just wait till he's done punching Jordan Poole and then give him a ring. Zach, the, the other I mean, part of these. Literally call Magic Johnson. Call Draymond Green. Call Dan Gilbert. I, those are just off the top of my head. I know they have other people. Probably, they, they definitely have graduates that aren't sports figures that have a, a, a millions and millions of dollars. What is, I was surprised that he took aim at Ohio State or, like, seemed to take aim at Ohio State because, Zach, pre-NIL, was Michigan State landing kids over Ohio no. State? No. Like, that program was built on developing players and really good evaluations. They weren't landing all the five stars. That's never how it was. No, and you know what? If he really, if he's really this, this big of a complainer about it, if it's really that big of an issue, you're getting overpaid to coach Michigan State. Mm. Donate $5 million to NIL every year. And keep five. Then you might actually keep your job and keep making money. Because you can complain all you want. You're actually going to get fired if you don't win. Now, what if this complaining is more to light a fire under the NIL basis? Is, could, could that be a part of it? Or is that something you do behind closed doors I, and not in an interview? I mean, listen, maybe he's to the point where he's tried to do it behind closed doors and mm. they aren't getting the shit going, so he's got to say it publicly. Yeah, to, they need get, they need one of us, it sounds like. <laughs> they need us to get it going over there. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah, we'll talk about it. You'll have a... Gee whiz, and you will have an interview with the AD very, very quickly because that's how it works over here. <laughs> uh, Jake, thanks for the five. Zach, thoughts on Bobby Carpenter? Saw he started a new podcast. Do y'all got beef? I, I don't I don't have beef with Bobby. I mean, we're not friends or anything, but that's great. Good for him. We just exist. Wish in, him success. Right. I mean, he's already had plenty of success, but. Wish him more more success. Gorgie Banks for the two. I like my money, not a team. F it. He's done with the Colts, bro. We've watched Gorky go full circle with his fucking man, Colts shit. My man Gorky is down bad with the Colts right now. Remember the week before the draft, they, they thought they were getting C.J. Stroud. <laughs> Shane, thanks for the five. Come down to South Florida, fellas. Hollywood, Samanon versus St. Francis, MD. Game of the week. 13 combined players ranked in the top 300. That's going to be awesome. I love it when those like Atlantic Coast teams like that St. Francis from Maryland go down to South Florida to play a South Florida team because it's, it's just – one, it's, it's you, you get to find out. These national games are awesome. Mm -hmm. And also, they get to see what South Florida speed's like. Whew. Brian, thanks for the five. Coach, Zach, have you ever been back to the Woody Ford game since all the BS took place? Chris, have you ever been to the Woody Ford game? I, 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 he's probably talking about the shoe, right? The Woody's the practice facility. But, um, no, I haven't. I, I mean, I, we, we had tailgates outside mm -hmm. of the stadium. But I, the only time I've been back inside the stadium was two weeks ago for the Morgan Wallen concert. And that's, that's the only time I've ever been in there since I got fired. I got to see good old Todd Beckman versus Akron in 2007 and the score was 20 to 2 and that was a great game. I got to I got to skip class that day to go to the game on a Saturday. Um Zach, you want to get a quick word from our partner and keep this thing moving? Absolutely. Let's get a quick break. Quick word from our sponsor. We'll be right back. We appreciate you. You know we had to mention our partner, our sponsor, longtime sponsor my bookie because it's the best online sports book out there, Menace Army. It's the only place to bet online you go to mybookie.ag use promo code menace you're gonna get a 50 percent deposit bonus you put in a thousand dollars they'll give you 500 free dollars to start building your bankroll not only that they have the my bookie money bag where they boost odds what normally is a favorite at minus 120 they'll boost it to plus 100 plus 120 so you're getting better payouts with free money on top of that right now they have a promotion going on with dustin poirier the world-class fighter. You know, they're a big supporter of mixed martial arts. If you go right, if you have a deposit the last 90 days, if you haven't yet, do it today. You make a deposit, go to go to their Twitter or Instagram and like the post about the promotion. You could win autographed, real, authentic, Everlast boxing gloves. You can hang them in your man cave or in your office. They're excellent. Um, kind of a, I don't know, something to talk about. So go to mybookie.ag, promo code MENACE, lock in that deposit for the giveaway, and also get a deposit bonus. Get free money. Start building your bankroll today, Menace Army. Get it done at the best sports book, mybookie. There you have it. 
Zach, at some point next week, we're probably going to do a, a Florida State versus LSU breakdown, I hope, in the coach report. I'm looking oh, yeah. forward to that. But oh, before yeah. really digging into the tape and some of the analytics, I'm curious your initial thoughts because we are now nine days away, right, from LSU versus Florida State. I mean, it's really this – is, this is that early pivot point for one team to jump ahead in the race in this playoff conversation, right? Both have – Really, really good returning starting quarterbacks. And Jaden Daniels at LSU, Jordan Travis at Florida State. It's truly going to be, I think, the coming out party for Keon Coleman, who is buried in East Lansing. Talk about NIL money, Mel Tucker. My guy, you had one of the best receivers in the country, and people didn't really know about him because you guys were awful. Keon Coleman's going to have a breakout day, I think, no matter what, whether whether Florida State wins or loses. I'm really excited for this game. This is this is going to be it's going to be awesome. You get this game the next week. You get Alabama, Texas. Like there's a great slate of college football this year early in the season. I think it's going to be awesome. And you're going to find out. How, does Brian Kelly have LSU ready to contend in the SEC West again? You know they're they're returning, defending SEC West champions, and you're going to see because they lost to Florida State last year. You're going to see if they can avenge that loss. Yeah, this is a a really interesting game for two programs that I think are at similar spots. Yeah, And again, like, I, I don't know all the, the football stuff, the football side of it, but quarterback-wise, I think they're really, really similar. Two guys, really mobile. Receiver-wise, receiver, receiver wise, I think Florida State probably has better receivers. I think Coleman is one of the three best receivers in all the ACC. Um, but obviously, you know, we've heard big things about Malik Neighbors. So yeah. it's kind of it's kind of what you're looking at. It. And these are two teams that are kind of trendy picks to make the college football playoff. They're they're hopefuls. Well, that's what, here's what you're going to see. We, we can write the narrative for you. Whoever wins – is going to immediately going to be in everybody's playoff prediction. Yeah, it's like because they won one game early. Like, stop it. Like, we don't know that yet. Like, I I won't put out a playoff prediction. I mean, we talk about it, and I talk about the teams that I think could have a chance. But there's no way to know what these teams are going to develop into until about week six, seven, eight. Does the winner of that game deserve to be number one in the AP poll? No, really. Well, there they... shouldn't be a poll. Okay, but that doesn't mean just because. Because they'll be more accomplished than any other team in the country. Yeah, what, what does that matter? That doesn't mean they're the best team in the country. The poll should be who's the best team in the country. Mm. And just because they actually played a game and won, one of us, somebody has to win. Right. What if they both are, are are not as good as advertised? If they both look terrible, then it's like you blame the defenses for being really good. Like right. They're, 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 the overreaction should be crazy. After yeah, the, the body of work is not there yet. Mm. I mean, you got to look at the full roster. I mean, George is going to go out and play a nobody win by 60. And now you're going to say, Oh, Florida state's better than Georgia. Why? Cause they actually played someone. Georgia looked fantastic against that shit bag team. They played. Yeah, facts. Well, early in the year, what you had Oregon, uh, Georgia last year. So everyone was like, I asked number one team in the country. They yeah. Right. The shit right. Out of Oregon. Beat the brakes off of Oregon. <laughs> that shit was super sexual. Is that the most exciting non Ohio state game, Zach, uh, next week? Oh, Absolutely. And oh, then, not even close. Then what? Your your school, Florida, plays Utah. Florida, on. Utah is going to be a good one. It's on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to be so awesome. I can't wait, man. I'm like, it's like I feel like Christmas is, is next week. Yeah. If you look recently at the transfer quarterbacks that maybe weren't great at their first stop but good at their second stop, could Graham Mertz be next on that? Yeah, I, saw, I mean, I, I saw this, and, and and it's a valid point. Like guys like Michael Penix Jr. Right? He, mm -hmm. he was just okay at Indiana. Was really good at Washington. Bo Nix at Auburn, below average, has a massive year last year. Um, who else? Hendon, Hendon Hooker, Hooker at Virginia Tech, massive year at Tennessee. It's certainly possible, but I have seen nothing out of Graham Mertz that makes me think that's going to happen. I also don't know that Billy Napier is the coach to make it happen. Right? You're talking about Hendon Hooker went from Virginia Tech to Tennessee with Josh Heupel, who is, I mean, he, do, he is like that as, as an offensive mind. And Alex Golish, the, the job they did. Bo Nix going to Oregon with, with Dan Lanning and, and the new staff at yeah, Oregon. Kenny, Kenny I, Dillingham was there. And too. I don't know if Billy Napier has that has that machine to revamp Graham Mertz and make him into this this real magical quarterback. I don't think I don't see it happening. If he does, oh dear God, will I be lying on this show and on the timeline? <laughs> I'll be talking about the big temper is the best quarterbacks. <laughs> and I'll be talking about Billy can fix whatever. And I'm just saying, like, I, Graham, Graham Mertz was not a good quarterback based on anything we've, yeah. we've ever seen. He had the one good game where he went, like, 11 for 12. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? <laughs> but neither was Bo Nix. That's what I'm so – well, well, But Bo Nix had moments, though. Like, Bo Nix against Oregon, it was like, oh, shit, there's something there. With no, Graham, he, didn't, he didn't play well. 
He under like the the touchdown that he's, they won the game on was underthrown by five yards. Like yeah, the kid made a play on he, it, but he was a gamer. Like with Graham, that's Mertz, not a gamer. That's a shitty throw, and the receiver bailed you out. That's nah. bad quarterback play. No Bo slander. It's bodacious. That's Bo knows. That's him. That's Billboard Bo. No double city dub. <laughs> I can't believe you're slandering Bo. He outdueled Justin Herbert. He didn't outduel anyone. His team won. His team did win. They did do that. But come on, Bo Nix as a freshman showed you more than Graham Mertz ever showed you. Yeah, that's true. Like because one of the only interceptions the Ohio State secondary had last year was Graham Mertz right to Ronnie Hickman. I know. Gra Graham, Graham Mertz, it's not happening. I mean, it's a cute tweet. It, the narrative aligns. It's absolutely true. But Graham Mertz ain't it. I'm sorry. I was trying to give you the chance to like just like fucking lie about your – your Florida. My alma mater. Your alma mater. No, it Florida ain't happening. A lie. Rose, throwing this up here because this is relevant to this topic. If Maybach Billy can't save Florida, blue chip Billy, who y'all think could and would? Doesn't seem like a bad job. Decent admin. Tons of talent. Top 15 money. What you think? Like, who, who would do a good job at yeah. Florida? I mean, none other than Brian Hartline. He's got oh. the pipeline in South Florida. He's got the swagger to recruit. Down south, you give him an SEC staff, watch out. Wow. I had to throw that in there. That would be fire. That would be really fire. We need a couple more Super Chats to keep this thing going. Shad, thanks for the 10. After listening to Zach, I'm more interested in a Percy Harvin documentary or biopic with Chris portraying him. The title could be, Don't Make Me Put the Hands on You. <laughs> that would be, if an angel investor wants to fund that for us, we'll make a biopic. I can act. Hey, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> my last acting gig, I was in a, I was in my school play in middle school. Peter Pan. I was the crocodile. Well, you, go you, Gators. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, thanks for the five. Braxton or Tebow? Who would you rather have? Who did Urban like better? Um, you, I mean, you're talk, talk, talking about two great players, but I would take Braxton because he's, he's faster, better athlete, better thrower. Tebow brought all the intangibles, but Bra but people followed Braxton. Braxton was a leader, and people followed him. Now, Tebow was maybe tougher, but he, he's better on fourth and one. But I'm, I'm taking Braxton for the full body of work, for sure. There it is. Shad, thanks for the five. I blame Saban for <laughs> – I blame Saban coming to Bama for pushing Urban over the edge. Ooh. I mean, that was a big part of it. Big part of it. The Playmaker, thanks for the five. Subcoach, just had my fantasy draft last night. Drafted Garrett Wilson, Michael Thomas off your comment, your commentary. Got JSN on the bench. I'm, hey, I'm trying to go all zone six on my fantasy team. I, I need Garrett, <laughs> Terry, Michael. Give me JSN, Chris. Paris, Chris. I'm, I'm, that, that's the only list I'm going to have. Mm -hmm. And as they fall, I'm gonna be like, shit, I better grab one here. Or I'm not going to have my guys. I need a zone six fantasy receiver core. Are you going no running backs? <laughs> The school no. of Chris Drew? No. That's <laughs> no. fucking stupid. Don't draft a running back. You have to draft a running back. I won a league last year without drafting a running back. But you had to have one in the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I ended up picking up Kenneth Walker right after the draft. <laughs> Debo, thanks for the five. Hell yeah, coach. Loving the shirt. I'm about to rock my one not done shirt today. By the way, Kyle for Heisman. Hey, don't you know? The West Dakota Heisman. There it is. Don't Chris, you know? Chris's hoodie in the building. <laughs> West Dakota stand up. Avery, thanks for the 10. Did you talk to Rule about how he feels about this team? Should Nebraska fans have a little hope or look forward to preseason hockey? Listen, well, I saw a clip and it fucked me up. Yeah, listen, they, they they feel like they had a really good camp. And they get listen, they got it's a it's a rebuild. They got a ways to go. I'm not saying they're gonna contend for the West, but I think Nebraska's gonna surprise some people, and Nebraska fans will leave this season feeling really happy about the trajectory of the program. Avery, thanks for the five. Did Urban change a lot going from Florida to Ohio State? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mainly in recruiting. Because it was such a pain in the ass. The kids he recruited at Florida, getting them to go to class, trying to get them off drugs. Like, once he came to Ohio State, one, I mean, just regionally, culturally, he recruited more Midwest kids. And whether you like it or not, Midwest kids are, I don't want to, overall a little higher character. More grounded. I don't know about more grounded. There's okay. less drugs okay. infested in the Midwest as there is in the South. It's just true. And he also, Ohio State, he, he had to deal with so many academic problems and all those issues that it was like, you know what? In recruiting, I'm not taking a pain in the ass. I don't want to have to do that. There's too much effort and energy. I don't want to waste my time. We can do it with good kids. Zach, 
Nick Saban had an interesting quote uh, yesterday that really surprised me, talking about a transfer that left the program. He said, I'm not mentioning names, but there was only one player that I was really disappointed that didn't stay here. I didn't understand why he was leaving. I've never heard Nick Saban kind of reference a player that left, kind of like that they, he wish he could have stayed. It's like, what did you make of this? Did this surprise you at all that he would even speak like that? No, I, I think I think he he lost a good one, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was that the offensive lineman. I forget his name. Either a lineman or receiver, someone. No, it was the lineman that went to Miami. That's the one. He was a starting lineman last year. God, I can't forget it. But either way, I think Saban's like, damn, that's the one I didn't like. That's the only one I cared about losing. All the rest of them are flighty, chasing money. That was the one. And like starter, great player. He also lost. Cohen, that's his name. Yeah, Cohen. I think he lost a backup too to uh, TCU. I think they lost another offensive lineman also. So it, it, did, get, it did get weird, but they do have a, a freshman of the, that they really like. I found that intriguing. More Nick Saban. You know, I love when he speaks because you get more than you do with Ryan Day. He's about the quarterback battle. It's taking shape to some degree. You all think that when we name a starter, that's the end of it, but it's just the beginning. That's the beginning of, of developing and preparing your starter to go win games. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely the beginning, but it's the end of the battle. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the end of the race. Whenever they end it, that is absolutely the end of the race. And also the beginning, I mean, it, it it's not true. It's definitely the end of the race, beginning of development of your starting quarterback. Definitely an odd thing to say. Yeah. And then five hours after that press conference, Jalen Milrow announced a new deal with Beats by Dre. <laughs> He's going to be the quarterback. How do we get It's just like, listen, Devin Brown announces the starter at Ohio State. Jalen Milrow announces the starter at Alabama. Now we can stop talking about it. Just quit asking. I'm not going to tell you. Like, just move on. They're going to be the starters. Let's talk about some other shit. It was funny that they did that press conference and then, like, right after Jalen announced the, uh, right. the the Beats by Dre deal. And it looks like across the country, all the uh, all the big-time quarterbacks are getting the, the Beats by Dre deal. Um, Sam Hartman got his and got all his whole, whole offensive line beats. I saw a bunch of them. I'm end up with those to the point where I couldn't even throw them in the notes. Uh, TJ, thanks for the five small world. I grew up in the same hood as Nia Butang. Nyan Botang. Nyan Botang, then moved to GA and lived next door to Omar Hunter and Buford. No shit. Whoa. Nyan Botang, Brooklyn's finest. Boy, he, he, I got so I have so many stories in Florida. I, I could really we could go on for three hours. Nyan Botang was a the the big time receiver that Billy Gonzalez got in the 05 class. That when he signed Percy Harvin, this kid had Brooklyn swag. Like he was. He was on that, like, but he he was so phony, like, man, when I go home, man, I'd be kicking it with Jay-Z. Like, and you're like, shut the fuck up. You ain't kicking it with Jay-Z. <laughs> but <clears throat> he did a fumble drill one time, and he tried to fight me. I was the GA that had to, like, try to punch the ball out, and he kept dropping the ball, and I went to punch it. It bounced off the ball and hit him in the face. Just unintentional. I didn't mean to. It wasn't that hard. He threw the balls at me and started to fight me, and shout out Dallas Baker, who was the leader of the room. He, him and three other receivers squared up and jumped him. Man, you don't go after Zach like that. Bop, bop. Just started fucking him up. I'm like, damn, they really got my back. <laughs> hey, and that's when I knew Dallas was a real one. I would have seen my whole life flash from my eyes. Yeah. I, might, I, I probably would have ran, bro. If I was a GA, making what, 450 a month? Fuck no, I'm not getting my ass beat. I'm hitting the dash. But, yeah, he was very Tate Martellish. Like, we, Percy Harvin committed. He was like, man, I don't give a fuck. Ain't nobody, ain't no freshman coming in here taking my my spot. Da, da, da. Percy came in, took the spot. <laughs> Nyan trans- transferred to Cal. <laughs> Up out of here. We say, uh, go Bucks and CJ better play. Yeah, CJ's got to play. Or we will, we will ride. CJ, shout out CJ Hicks. Yes. Spratt, thanks for the five. Can't wait for NCAA 24 to release. I'm so pumped to lead Boise State to a natty in Dynasty. <laughs> Bro, the blue turf used to hurt my eyes when I played the game. Absolutely. I'm coaching. Is coaching really like having extra children? I'm still very good friends with my high school OC. Absolutely it is. Absolutely. If done right, if done right, you don't lose. I mean, you, you stay in contact. That's a life, a lifetime relationship. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a bunch of phony ass coaches that say it is. And then they don't even check on their guys or talk to them ever again. Oof, brutal stuff. Want to talk about Georgia real quick. Bear Alexander spoke about why he, uh, why he left Georgia. Now he was in line to start this year and kind of be in the middle, kind of be the next up after Jalen Carter on that defensive line, obviously went out West to join Alex Grinch and USC. And the reason was this, if I can't trust you, with what you say, I'm out. That's what it got to at Georgia. Zach, what does this mean? Translate this for me. It means they they told him he'd be in the mix to be a starter, and he wasn't good enough. He didn't perform well enough to start, and he and he felt lied to. It's like, bitch, you didn't get lied to. You didn't do your part. We thought you were going to be the starter because you should develop and work hard and grind and become the starter. The talent is there, and he didn't. He didn't get it done. 
And now he's like, that's why I left, because them coaches lied to me. I hate that shit with fucking players. No, that coach didn't lie to you. You know how many times coaches lie to you? Very, very small percentage of the time. Most of the time is you hear what you want to hear. You don't follow through. It doesn't play, play out how you envision it playing out, and you want to blame the coaches. That's excuse-making bullshit. I'm out on Bear Alexander. That's some soft-ass shit. Out there at USC now. He's good enough to play out there. They're going to need him out there. Alex Grinch is going to need him out there. Um, like you said, you, you used to reference that it's like you got to hold up your end of the bargain and the coach will hold up their end of the bargain because they want to win. You want to play. That's it. If you, you don't wait, you think, do we really think that Kirby smart, he was the best D tackle outside of Jalen Carter and Kirby smart said, don't play him. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Now, I was going to say some Ohio State shit there, but I just want to get a quick word from our partners and, <laughs> and get it going. Our last last sponsorship coming in hot. Go check it out. AURA.com forward slash menace. This show is sponsored by Aura, an online protection tool powered by AI. What is it nowadays, right? But uh, I got to tell you about this because they, they gave me a free two-week trial. And that's what you get if you use our, our link in the bio, Aura.com forward slash menace. You get a two-week free trial to check it out. What they do is they protect... Protect you from identity theft and your leaked personal information. They remove your data from data brokers. There's these massive data brokers out there that just buy and collect data and then sell it to people. We all know the some of the um, social media sites that, that do this also. Uh, but what Aura does is they scrub the dark web for, for any and all of your leaked addresses, social security number, passwords, bank account information. And it's a constant thing. 24 hours a day, AI is scouring the internet for your information. And then they... Remove it from them. They take it from them. It also has a credit protection uh, aspect to it where it's constantly monitoring your credit. If, if some kind of fraud happens, you get alerts within minutes. This is truly, it's, it's the wildest thing that I've ever signed up for because I, I went on and when I signed up for it, they found 23 different data brokers, these massive data companies that had a sh all my information. I'm talking social security number, address, emails, passwords, leaked passwords, and they immediately scrubbed them and removed them from all the data brokers. So if you want to protect yourself and protect your family and not get robocalls and not have your information being traded on the, on, on the dark web, you got to sign up for aura.com forward slash menace to get a free two week trial. Just sign up, try it for two weeks and just look at all your stuff that's out there and you'll be You'll be as shocked as I was. So go check it out, aura.com forward slash menace. You'll be shocked to see what, what of your personal information is out there. And also, you could do it for your family too. Protect your kids, protect your spouse, protect yourself. Go sign up for Aura at aura.com forward slash menace. There you go, aura.com forward slash menace. Eight days away from Ohio State playing Indiana. Zach, Ohio State obviously have, has not formally announced their starting quarterback. You announced it, I guess, formally, maybe. Not not super sure. Listen, if we don't get an announcement on Monday of game week, I, I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that I wanted to ask at this point, how can you continue this competition? Because you told me before the show you do the two scrimmages and then no more, right? Oh yeah. There so goes, what's Saturday like for a competition between quarterbacks? I mean, it's still it still matters. It's still kind of a scrimmage. It's not ones on ones. It's not like hell bent, like trying to go win a job. This is truly more like a mock game. Mm -hmm. Like what they're gonna do this weekend is they're gonna go through kind of the game day experience, like go to the stadium, go in the locker room, like so that one, the players that have, have been there get reminded of how game day works, but also you got you got a bunch of freshmen in there. They're gonna be dressing and they need to know where to go, what to do, and not fuck the game day up. Like so they do that, and then they get a, they get work in. I mean, it's mostly ones on twos or some scout work, but they get work in. But you're in game prep mode. You are no longer in scrimmage and figure out who's going to start mode. I am shocked that Ryan Day has not announced yet. I am too, but it just the only thing that makes me nervous is he's to keep Kyle engaged, knowing what they have the first three games. He's going to play both of them. I think he's they're both should play. Devin should start, and when the game's out of hand, Kyle should go in. That's how it should go. If they try to do some bullshit of rotating, um, it's it, it's really bad for the development of, of Devin Brown moving forward. Absolutely. Is there a sense that you maybe can't go as hard with this Saturday before game week, or do you still try to go as hard as you can? Nah, I mean you go you, you can't ever take the field and go go half gotcha. ass. That's honestly that's when you get hurt more often than if you go hard. I guess I'm just curious, like, like, are you still going full throttle given all the injuries that happened last year? But if you say that's how you get hurt, I, I believe nine, you. I, when you don't go hard, 
you get hurt. I've seen guys break legs, all kinds of shit, because they just, they were, they kind of got lazy and they pulled up and then got rolled up on. They didn't finish the block and got bent back. Like, you have to go hard. Is Ryan Day hurting Devin Brown by not naming him the starter yet? Like I said, not naming him publicly doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay. Now, if he's not repping him and preparing him to be the starting quarterback, yeah, that's a problem. But I, from, from what I know and what I believe, he is being prepared as a starter. With Kyle McCord still getting some getting reps, of course. Kyle McCord still needs to develop. If Devin Brown goes down, Kyle McCord's got to go in, right? And he's got to be a great player. But it doesn't matter what Ryan's saying publicly. A lot like Nick Saban, not naming Jalen Milrow. It matters that he's getting prepared like a starter. And I'm curious kind of how that is uh, going. From the men's generals, as a coach, when do you let outside opinion matter? Iowa needing to get rid of their offensive coordinator, for example. Well, it only matters when that outside opinion has a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it's donated to the university. The fan base is the fan base. They're not going to agree with you. But at some point, if the administration trusts you as the head coach to do your job and is okay with what you're doing, you just do what you, what you believe is right. Now, if a bunch of people with big money are demanding a trade, like, hey, it's it's you or him, it's him. <laughs> he got to go. <laughs> My guy, JC, shout out to you and your home, your son, Wes. Uh, fastest guy, Zach, has coached at each position. And who's the fastest guy you've coached and coached against not named Ted Ginn? Ooh, we'll, we'll just go down the skill positions. Fastest. Fastest receiver I ever coached or I, I've ever been around was Percy Harvin. Okay. Bar none. Fastest running back, Jeff Demps. I talked about him, a 10 flat, 100 meter kid. Uh, fastest quarterback, Braxton Miller. Fastest tight running. end, oh, yeah. Aaron Hernandez. Okay. Um, fastest corner. Fastest corner? Ooh. Probably Denzel Ward. Oh, I thought so. I thought you were gonna say Marshawn Lattimore. No, Uncle Ooh. Denzel Ward. Um, fastest safety. Ooh, probably Reggie Nelson. Okay. Fastest linebacker Ryan Shazier. That's an easy one. Um, fastest player player we ever coached coached against was Trendon Holiday at LSU. Another track guy. Um, team speed. Team speed. Team speed. Fast, fast, speed kills. <laughs> fast, fast, SEC speed, man. That was that was directly from. I felt like from you guys. That was a, that was a hell of a media media campaign, media push. Yeah. I got Kyle. Which front four are you taking? Joey, Draymond, Mike Bennett, and Taekwon, or Chase, Adolphus, Adolphus, Davon Hamilton, and Hubbard? Golly, mm. man, how can you answer that? I'm taking that top group. I'll take Joey Bosa, Draymond Jones, Mike Bennett, and Taekwon. I guess. But that's, I mean, you're splitting hairs. That's eight great defensive linemen. Both of them are natty caliber. I mean, just filthy. <laughs> disgusting, disgusting. Um, You guys are killing on the Super Chat side. I'm trying to figure out where to go and how to act. Uh, <laughs> old Ben, thanks for the five. Was watching the 18 Ohio State versus Michigan game last night, then watched Olave catch two tutties in that game. Do you think Haskins' 50-yard TD in the season will be broken? I mean, it's, Yes. Every record will be broken at some point. Mm. I don't think it's this year. Hold up. I do think it's this year. Stop it. If. Stop it. Just fuck with you. Keep moving. It'll be next year. Anthony, thanks for the two. We outside for the home opener. That's my dog, bro. That's a that's an Akron boy, for real. Love it. Alex, thanks for the five. Shout out to y'all. Mom passed away last week, and you guys have been the perfect distraction. Love y'all. Be blessed. Thank you. Appreciate Alex. you, Alexander. Praying for you, brother. Praying That's tough. You. Rooting for you. Kyle, thanks for the five. Zach, how was Urban's behavior during the week of the Team Up North game? Any interesting stories? Well, I mean, the interesting story was he didn't hardly talk at all in 2015 after we lost to Michigan State. And But, I mean, yeah, everything was more intense. But that's one of those – that game, you don't have to do extra shit as a coach. Players walk in and look differently. Now, he had a whole rivalry, like, motivation – week plan playing the, the LL Cool J time for war in the facility on loop 24 fucking hours a day, like jerseys on the ground, logos in the pissers. Like, you know, it felt different for sure, but you don't coach much different because the play, the players just have a different buzz to them, a different feel to them. Oh, yeah. Tim, thanks for the 10. Put the <laughs> put this towards the bodyguard fund after all the great inside info. Best sports show out there. Great job, guys. Appreciate you, Tim. Yeah. You think we'll ever need a bodyguard? I don't know. I got a bodyguard, but it ain't a person. 
Holy law abiding citizens. Absolutely. She had Donald Trump mugshot. Of course, she did. It's literally everywhere. Yeah, that's been most, the most. That's been the most forced meme I've ever seen, bro. I mean, just I'm, it's people's profile pictures. Yeah, it's, it's a meme. It's everywhere. I've seen about seven dudes from my hometown all with that same profile picture. I don't know who's who, <laughs> but because you know they all got the crazy names. <laughs> Jay, thanks for the five. Just. Just for making my lunch hour the best hour. You guys are the best. Excellent content. Keep up the great work. Go Bucks. We appreciate you, Jay. Like the video if you haven't, man. It really helps us. I would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It does feel like we're like, I get, I'm living a dream at least. Shane, thanks for the two. It's middle finger. NCAA and Jim Harbaugh wanted to promote them. Absolutely. Future head coaches. That's exactly what it is. But who's the first head coach, Shane? Let me ask you. Who in that list will be the first head coach? Oh, that's a good question. Who do you think it'll be? I mean, it could be a guy like Mike Hart at a Mac school. Okay. See, I think it'll be Sharon Moore or Jesse Minner. Yeah. See, but I don't. I don't disagree. They're yeah. they're obviously coordinators, and and they're on the track to get a head coaching job mm -hmm. sooner than Mike Hart. But a running back coach with a name like Mike, a guy like Mike Hart, with his resume, his history, he could want to be a head coach and jump down to the Mac. I don't think Sharon Moore or Jesse Minner. I know. I know for a fact they would never even consider a Mac job. Mm -hmm. No, Jesse Minner is going to be the next head coach of Boston College. There you go. Eth, oh, you're. I threw, I threw this up here, didn't I? You did. He must have sent it twice because unless my shit's all out of order. Uh, Coach D, thanks for the five. Coach and Chris with the roster talent Ohio State has and its closest silver bullets of old, or remind you of previous great defenses. What do you think? Silver bullets back? I mean, it, it's all about development and coaching at this point. They have the skill, they have the talent. It, it's it's a matter if if he if Jim Knowles puts it all together, if these coaches can get it all done. Buckeye Brazy, thanks for the 10. What's up, Menace Gang? 2016 Ohio State versus Michigan. Did JT really get that first down? Chris, Zach? First down, Buckeyes. I was standing right there. I had the same perspective Jim Harbaugh had from the other sideline. And he did. The ball, the nose of the ball crossed. Sorry. Honestly, I was crying like on, on my floor, just like in tears. Like I thought we lost. I thought it was all <laughs> over. I couldn't see anything. I felt like I was going to throw up. My mom was upstairs watching the Michigan game at the top floor while I was downstairs watching it. Uh, you know, she went to Michigan and all that. But definitely, definitely had me in a blender. I don't know what the fuck it was, but he looked, he looked like he got it to me. Gorky makes for the two. Zach is forgetting. You play to win the game. <laughs> oh, I didn't forget that. Who forgot that? Ah, uh, Sean, welcome to the live stream. Listen to every episode on Spotify. Y'all occupy my hour and a half commute from work. Props, gents. Appreciate you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Shad, thanks for the five. Speaking of an untold story, that hit Tebow took against Kentucky should have led to violence. Well, here's the fun part about that. When Tebow got knocked out cold, I'll tell that story real quick. So I was the GA up in the box, right? We had Billigan's, uh, let me think about it. Oh, our backup quarterback, who I believe was John Brantley at the time, signaled in the plays, right? I'm the only person on the staff who knew the signals as like John Brantley did. Tebow, it's, it's a zero pressure and empty. Tebow saw it. He's going to drift and throw a touchdown. But what, we're, what was supposed to happen, he was supposed to bring someone in to protect the backside. He just didn't. He forgot. And so he got blindsided, really in his, in his face, but he's looking this way, and got knocked out cold. The minute he did, I had to sprint faster than I've ever sprinted in my life from the, all the way up in the press box to the sideline so that I could signal the plays because we had no one else to do it. <laughs> Oh, because the backup quarterback's got to go in. Yeah, got to go in the game. But That's Tebow was out cold. That is crazy as shit. Kasai, my guy. Buckeye. Buckeye legend over here on the Twitter side, Zach. Uh, thanks for the five. Tommy V, thanks for the five. Other than Burrow, Chase, and Jefferson, who is the best trio? Who? Tua, Hill, and Waddle? It could be. Um, um, Aaron Rodgers. Garrett and Lazard? No. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, Gabe Davis, Josh Allen, and uh, and Diggs? No. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. That's a great question. The best trio. So um, who, who's who, – what about A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Jalen Hurts? Oh, yeah. That's a really good one. That's that's probably the yeah, one. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. that. Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, and Jalen Hurts. I'm going to go with Daniel Jones, Darren Waller. And and Paris Campbell. 
Yeah, see, you won't, you won't, you won't slick talk Paris because in Paris we trust. No, but Daniel Jones just takes you out of the mix. Yeah, you mean Jim Carrey? <laughs> Alex, thanks for the two. Are we going to run a four-three with a four-two-five package? It's oh, how you classify Sunny Styles? It's a it's a nickel package, and Sunny's going to be that hybrid. Mm -hmm. Mike Tate, thanks for the five. Menace to Sports, aka if airing things out was a podcast. <laughs> I love the show. Zach, how and when did you come up with the Zone Six nickname? Shut up, Gucci. Uh, it was it was a it was a meeting with my players, and uh, we were talking about different ones, and that was Gucci Main. It wasn't is a big deal, and all he did was shout out Zone Six, yep. and all all my players listened to rap, obviously, and it just made sense. The end zone, you get six points. It was culturally relevant to young kids recruiting. It was great. It was perfect. The perfect name. East Atlanta Santa. East Atlanta Santa, baby. <laughs> bro, you remember when he dropped that Christmas album? Oh, the, bro, so fire. I played every every year on Christmas. Bro, that shit had me in a chokehold, still has me in a chokehold. My play when he dropped that, we were in bowl prep. I <laughs> I would play in my meeting room. I had a, a nice sound system, and my players would lose their shit. Terry McLaurin would <laughs> lose his fucking mind every time. East Atlanta Santa with a body on his belt. That shit Just was so wild. hard. That shit was ridiculous, bro. Gucci. Gucci. Oh, man. That's bringing back memories. Kasai, thanks for the five. This Buckeye defense will be the best in the college football playoff era. JTT, Sonny, CJ Hicks, Tommy E, Kenyatta, Jack Sawyer, Burke, Hancock, Iggy, and Devin Brown at QB. It's natty season. Oh, you can tell season's coming. Them hot takes coming out. It's natty season. Buckeye Nation is feeling the buzz. Oh, we win the sneaky natty. It's really up. Fuck everybody else. Mr. Mr. X, thanks for the 1,000 yen. I don't know what that means, but I appreciate it. It's about $7. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate so. it. Uh, Ibar, thanks for the uh, two. And Mr. X, thanks for the 1,000 yen again. Zach, is it true that Florida tried to campaign Percy in 2008, but he didn't care to respond to Florida? I think Percy Harvin is the best college football player ever, and even Cam Newton said it. He is. I've told. I don't know about the campaign. Percy not responding. I don't. I don't remember that. But um, but it, he he's the best football player I've ever seen. Ever. Even Urban said. I mean, Pete Carroll said Pete, it. Pete Carroll said it. Which is actually insane. The more you, the more, the more you think about it. Thanks for the two, my guy. Hot take. Jack Sawyer has a better year than JTT. I am on that train with you. I disagree, but I think Jack Sawyer is going to have a good year. The Rod Farva, love you, bro. <laughs> Thanks for the ten, bro. bro Rod, for all the chat demons out there, Rod deserves so much credit because we accidentally blocked bro yeah. for like six months and he never wavers. Never once. We never appreciate wavers. you, Rod. Rod, thanks for the 10. Can you detail the difference in how SEC programs practice compared to Big Ten programs? And is that a major difference between the only, between the two and why the SEC has better postseason success? I mean, I think overall the SEC is, is better coached than the Big Ten, but I've, I've, I've really only been involved with Urban's practices and – they're as, they're as hard and as detailed of a practice as you could ever have. But I think the biggest issue is talent. The talent gap is so wide between the SEC and Big Ten, especially outside of the Ohio States. And I, that, that's the biggest issue. I mean, I think big, the Big Ten practice is hard, but the SEC is definitely better coached. And all you have to do is look at coaching salaries, right? You mm -hmm. look at the staff salaries in the SEC compared to the Big Ten, you're going to have the better coaches because you're going to hire them away from the Big Ten if they're that good. There you go. We also talked about how, like, like the distribution of coaches. Like sometimes in the Big Ten, the best coaches don't end up at the best programs. Yeah. And the SEC, the best coaches end up at the best programs. Yep. Tommy V, thanks for the two best trio in college football, QB and two wide receivers. Mm. There's, there's a couple good ones. Can mm. I float one to you? Go ahead. Um, Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, and Quinn Ewers. It's tough to argue with that one. That's for sure. Um, I was going to leave you your Florida State trio. Yeah, I mean – Jordan, those are the ones in the conversation, right? You have Jordan Travis with Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman. That's going to be a ridiculous trio. Which, the trio at, at Texas is going to be dominant. If Devin Brown is everything he's cracked up to be, Emeka Ibuka, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Devin Brown will be right there in that fucking conversation. No one at Michigan. Uh, no one at Penn State. Uh, I don't know. Tanner Mordecai, CJ Wood. Nah. <laughs> I, I think hello. Those, hello. Hello. Those are the ones. <laughs> right now <laughs> oh goodness thinking more of cj with e and steel chambers yeah no i mean i, th I think i think there's going to be times in 12 personnel where cj gets on the field as a third linebacker but i i don't think you can't do it against 11 personnel so if teams are going to come out and play 11 personnel it's it, you can't you can't put those three on the field 
I just got a text. JB starting over Fleming. Don't know if there's anything to it, but JJ Ballard. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been on that train. If that shit happens. That was based on no information. That was just my eyes told me <laughs> Jaden Ballard was going to be the starter over, over Julian Fleming. <laughs> Who told you that? My eye sockets. Oh my goodness. We're pushing two hours. Hit that like button. We're here. I feel hey, it's good. a Friday. It's a freaky Friday. We're going to, we got plenty of time to have fun. Yeah. I'm, it's... I'm like, I'm kidless all weekend. <laughs> you Watch are. Out. You are, man. I got, man. It's funny because I'm the one that has a couple things to do this weekend. Usually it's it's the other way around. Bless you, brother. That's the first sneeze. Zach comes in and sneezes three times, usually two before. (laughs) Bless you. There we go. We hit the sneeze quota for the day. Appreciate you, boss. (laughs) Um, Here we go. About Greg Madison. Did not realize he was on Urban staff at University of Florida. Talk about him and Urban's relationship, and how did Urban feel when Madison went on to Michigan? Well, he went on to the Ravens first. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, Greg Madison and Urban worked together at Notre Dame as assistant coaches. He, Greg Madison is one of the best coaches I've been around. He is phenomenal. Maybe, maybe a little bit old school, not a great coordinator at Michigan. You can say whatever you want, but he's a phenomenal football coach. And he left Florida to go join John Harbaugh at the Ravens. And then he wasn't going to leave the Ravens to go to Ohio State. And then ended up going with Jim Harbaugh at Michigan way later. So and they have the utmost respect. And if we're being honest, I don't think Madison really fucks with Urban like that. Mm. Interesting. I love when when Madison left Michigan. He said they, the player said, "Yeah, he called and said it was really just about the money." <laughs> <laughs> said deuces. <laughs> he said, "I can't turn down an M." At least he kept it real, right? Yeah. Like players were upset about that because he's like, "Dang, we, like, he built these strong relationships." He was like, "Honestly, I'm trying to get this mill and retire. Yeah, I'll I'm catch trying to retire. I need this money." Right. I love that. Love that. Brody, thanks for the five. Love the show, gentlemen. OH, I play club at Toledo. Who's your prediction for the MAC champ? Come on, you can't ask me that. You know I'm going to be biased as hell when it comes to MAC football. I like to keep it 100 in Power 5 football, but I'm going Isaac Zumba all the way. Bowling Green State University, my guy Scott Leffler, Brian White, the crew. Oh, yeah, check us out. (laughs) Look at that. Is That's it that I Ziggy, what is it? The I the Ale Ziggy, Ziggy Zumba. Yep, Ale Ziggy Zumba. That's the uh, that's the NIO collective beer that they have over there at Bowling Green. Shout out to my guy Mike for sending that down. I gotta get it in the fridge. I gotta I want to drink it, but it's one of those I don't really want to drink it. Yeah, we gotta get a mini fridge in here, bro. For real. That's like next up on the list. Craig, thanks for the five. Hey guys, I'm an Indiana fan. Would love to get your thoughts on how struggling programs like IU can build itself up. Thanks and love the show. Well, they 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 had they were and they fired Kevin Wilson. So they, the administration has to be stop being such soft fucks. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. They they have to hire a great coach. Tom Allen and he ain't it. They had a great one in Kevin Wilson. Bring Kevin back. Hire his ass. Where's he at? Tulsa. Bring him back. Say, hey, oh, my bad dog. We <laughs> fucked this up. That yeah, we were wrong. Mom. Please, please come back and do what you were doing. Honestly, I think they need to obviously. It's recruit development evaluation, right? Like programs like that, they need to have a senior laden team. They need to have a window where they have a really good class that stays for all four or five years. And modern coach football is a little bit trickier to do. They need to do one thing and one thing only because they are. I'm joking. They're not going to hire Kevin Wilson back. Obviously. There is a guy that they need to hire. They need to hire Justin Fry. Facts. Go hire Justin Fry, and I promise you, he's going to build it back. Culture guy, um, hell of a. I mean, great recruit. I mean that 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 is. I I agree. I think that is the uh, that is the move. Mr. X, thanks for the 1,000 more yen. Appreciate it. I'm not sure how that's going to work on the conversion side for us. <laughs> Zach, would you take a head coaching job at Florida if Napier doesn't work out? Who was the fastest player you saw at Florida? I heard Meyer did a lot of fastest man competitions. You did the real Swamp Kings. I told you I would when the documentary was announced. Um, sure, I'd take the head coaching job in Florida. It ain't happening. But uh, that's about the only way I would ever get back into coaching is if I was the head coach and was my own boss because I, I love this shit too much. Uh, the fastest player I ever saw at Florida is per- uh, uh, Percy Harvin, but Jeff Demps is close second. Bro, if you took the head coaching Florida that job at Florida, could I come? Would you put me on staff? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> what? Where would I be on staff, though? I don't know. Just kick it. Special advisor. Special advisor to the head coach? Yeah. I'll be the funny guy. I keep the team spirits up. No, nah, we're, we're, we're making up a name. and It's, it's got to be like the, the menace general – of staff menace chief of, chief of staff menace chief of staff <laughs> that'd be fire <laughs> i don't know what the fuck i would do but i would uh, i'd have a blast doing it jacob thanks for the five zach my gay friend brian tells me he watches your show and now he's gonna start talking balls with his friends well that's good for brian <laughs> see we're accepted in the, in the alphabet community i love it 
is you guys are going crazy with the super chats. Zach, did you coach Dane Sonsenbacher? Thoughts? I loved Dane so much. That son of a bitch was tough as shit. Didn't coach him, never met him. Heard he's a good dude. Oh, all right. Well, last thing. When you were with Urban at Florida, did Urban keep track of the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry? Obviously, he was a busy man, but did he give a shit about Ohio State before he coached there? Um, so he 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 did. He cared about it if we could watch it. I, I think there was only one time where I got, we got to watch it because we played like a really early game. Because Ohio, Ohio State-Michigan used to be the week before Thanksgiving. Yeah. And, and down in Florida, you play Florida State the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So you always played a cupcake the week that Ohio State played Michigan. And so I think there was one time I like I hauled ass and made it home to watch it. I know Urban watched it when he could, and he paid attention to who won. But you're so busy as a coach, you can't like you, you can't fan out. Facts. Chris, the UF ball handler. I would not be a ball boy if I went down there. I wouldn't do that. Towel boy, hub analyst. Now you're talking. Zach knows my hub knowledge does run deep. Chris's addiction to porn is through the no, roof. No, no, it's not an addiction. It's studies. It's, it's it's he's learning. I enjoy art and science, and 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 art I've, and biology. Yes, exactly <laughs> what it is. Oh, porn is just art and biology. That's it, all it is. It really is. It's like I enjoy good music. I enjoy good football. I enjoy good porn. Like I don't have an addiction to it. Yes, sir. Rod, thanks for the five. <laughs> You were part of this. You were part of six Ohio State Michigan practices. How different was the practice in 2015 after the loss to Sparty? That's I've talked about it a couple of times. I mean, the biggest difference was Urban was absolutely just broken, destroyed, and he didn't come back to life until pregame in Ann Arbor. Like the whole week, he was non-existent. The coaches were holding it together. The players were going hard, and he was like, I mean, post-practice speeches, like meals, like he was just he was a zombie. Zach, get me the fuck up out of here, bro. Great show. Look at that. Almost two hours. I told you we were going to get there eventually. That Swamp Kings got us going. It gave us the juice. Be a friend. Tell a friend. If you love this show, hit that share button. Post it on Twitter. Send it to your friends. Group chats. Tell them, hey, you got to watch the real Swamp Kings documentary. We're going to put it out on micro content. It is, it's time to blow up, Menace Army, and we need your help. So like the video, subscribe if you haven't, and share it with a friend. We got another super chat. <laughs> Brick, thanks for the five. Coach, did you ever recruit Eric Page from Holland Springfield High School? He left college too early, in my opinion. What are your thoughts about him leaving? Um, I, I didn't didn't recruit him. I'm not I'm not familiar with him, but I, I can check him out. Oh, here you go. Look look at Fish. I know Fish. He said my brother Gary Fisher played for Urban at BG and and, and me BG and me. Then Matt drills was prison like. They were they were they were real, and they're not like that anymore. They don't do the grappling anymore because kids kids started like there was a. a Risk of injury. But that shit used to be wild. But anyways, we're out of here. It's Friday. Go get your freak on Menace Army. Get your dick wet. <laughs> Menace out.